municipal order at 601. Um, are there any additions adjust or adjustments to the agenda? Recording in progress. I repeat, we're uh, called to order at 601. Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? I don't hear any. I just want to make a note about the agenda that we have a lot here and we need to firm up our budget. So there is a very strong possibility that we run out of time and recess. Um, we need to get our budget. So, that being said. So that being said, would that be your your priority recess other items on the agenda, not the budget. Recess non-budget items, yes. If if needed. Um so Eric, we popped you over here just because of space. Uh let's go ahead and jump into budget. All right, uh, opening there, do we have any particular requests or places that the board wants to start? Uh, yep. Can we, before we get into the budget, talk about philosophically how we want to deal with cash on hand? Because that might change our budget. Okay, sure. Uh, you want me to take a lead? By all means. Okay. Uh, the way it's being presented in, in in the format here, it's the way we did it the last year or two, but a lot of that reason was because we didn't have a regular town meeting, so the, uh, the voters would not have an opportunity to amend anything or or change anything as it's being presented because uh, we did Australian ballots because of the COVID. I, I personally, this way, it probably has the least amount of transparency. Uh, in the past, the way we used to do it is we present the budget to the voters, go down through highlighting any items that are. Uh, significantly changed or new items, those sort of things. And then at the very end, we would have the cash on hand displayed and we would uh, just inform the voters that approving the budget would uh, approve these uh, cash on hand proposals that we are uh, presenting. Uh, the other, and some of the, where it's problematic is uh, some of the voters have expressed some concern in the past with not really having a say in how we deal with cash on hand, uh, transparency issues, and those sort of things. Another uh, way that we could do it is by article. Um, we could write up an article that says, you know, we anticipate a, an audited. Uh, uh, cash on hand estimate of around 205,000 and propose in the article where to be applied certain amount towards uh, reducing taxes, certain amount to other uh, reserve funds or however we saw fit. The good and the bad of that would be uh, the voters would have the ability to amend that article to whatever their likings were, change it. Um, you know, there would be great trans uh, transparency there for the voters, and they would certainly have the say because they would vote on it. So there are some pluses and minus to it, but the minus is they have the say, and that means some of our wishes might not be. Uh, uh, we might like to see the money go toward might not be what the voters like, are right we may not be able to fund some things we're planning for so so i think that you know the board really should think about and decide what approach we want to use and depending on that approach it could change 
the way it's illustrated in the budget being presented. So that's just what I wanted to throw out here and see if the board wanted to discuss it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm trying to catch my breath still. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe run all the way over. <laughs> you ran all the way here. <laughs> uh, uh, so, what do you, anyone have thoughts right after that? No, thank you. It won't come as any surprise to anybody, I'm sure, that that I am not in favor of applying the surplus as line items in the budget and showing the total amount of the surplus as revenue coming in, regardless of whether we're showing a certain amount to reduce taxes and the balance uh, being applied to the budget. I, I just... I feel pretty strongly that it does not, it it, meet, it certainly meets the goal of getting voter authorization to apply the surplus to the budget. It does not give the voter any meaningful way to determine how that surplus gets. Do you, so you're basically opposed to it being listed as revenue on the budget? Does that mean you're in favor of having it as an article? I would, I could live with either approach of having a special article seeking the authorization of the voters to spend the surplus, mm -hmm. or I, I could be happy with applying a certain amount of the surplus as a line item in the budget as an amount to reduce taxes. I think we had talked about the figure of 125,000 being used to reduce taxes. And then, as Eric said, being very specific and clear with the voters that appended to the bottom of the budget was our proposals for how to spend that, the remainder of that surplus and in essence ask for their authorization to to do that at the meeting, like I could go and still that. list in the budget, it, it's, but it's just not in the revenue. N no, I would not. I would not expense out the the way it's in there right now. You're showing it both as revenue and okay. expensing out by line item. Yeah. So I I I'm it, it, except for an amount to be applied to reduce taxes, which I I I think I think I heard Eric say. An article could be everything, including how much they wanted us to apply towards taxes and yeah. other things. Mm -hmm. I I could go with that approach, or I could go with the other approach that you talked about of appending it to the bottom and just being very clear. I, I just think we need to be really transparent with the voters that here's a, here's the estimated surplus. Here's how here's our recommendations for how to spend that. And give them some opportunity to say no. We'd like you to spend it here or there. Or mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever. Um, or Evan, do you have a preference? I mean, obviously, clarity is needed. Um, the amount to reduce taxes being shown as revenue, I'm fine with an appending it at the bottom. <clears throat> Back to our previous meeting, I don't think that our expected surplus from this year should be spent. I think that should be part of the audited cash on hand for next year. Because right now we're planning on $2,261 expected surplus for this year in our cash on hand. That's not guaranteed until July 1, when everything's closed. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think that should be separated out from. And then next year, it would be working from an audited amount. So you're fine with the amount to be applied to taxes in the budget, though? Historically, it's been there. Okay. The, the 125? Well, sure. it used to be 100 for a while, yeah. but yeah. Okay. That line item has been there. Yes. Yeah. Look. So in this graph that we have, uh, 
line item that uh, we have line 223 has right. been added from past budgets that we have right um there is no i guess that's where the 84,547 is shown which is the excess <clears throat> over 125,000 that we have to go to reducing taxes uh, that does help a lot with clarity because that would be anything that goes to reserve funds or capital purchase, whatever the voters. Are you sure? Are you sure? Two twenty three is the line. One twenty three. One twenty three. Okay. You said two twenty three. The one. Here, I'm about looking at two. She was talking about two, is and I kept looking yeah. back. Okay. This is also printed in a smaller version than our previous one. So yeah. I really <laughs> That's why so I look at it because I can I can explain it. Okay, one, two, three. I gotcha, yeah. But that does help with the amount that would be at the end. And it shows it going to reduce costs or offset costs. But you wouldn't want to show that if you weren't expensing out. So that eighty, that eighty four, is that actually counted as revenue in our general budget? It's right now. It's showing as revenue, and it's being expensed out in yeah. line one fifty three, one sixty, and two oh seven. Gotcha. So in other words, that was added to the number that was in there previously. But that's money in, money out. We could zero out all those lines and zero out this cost to, well, would we leave the cost to offset? I'm sorry. Would we leave the reserve or estimated fund balance cost of offset in there? So how is this, how is the um, cash on hand after the audit applied after? so? pretend that we uh, reduce all of the expenses using that cash on hand right now. They're all just zero, those three lines. And we zero out the one line 123. And instead we just consider a cash on hand broadening to be applied to next year's budget, meaning just a bottom line, whatever that number is, gets applied to the bottom line budget. So there's no specific line items on like what do you what does that look like okay. for you? guess that would be the discussion on the floor, right? And where the voters would like to see that $85,000 roughly allocated. And that would be what we are proposing to apply to the various reserve funds. Yeah, I understand. But if we're not capturing it in our, we're not capturing the application of that cash on hand, what we expect it to be for budgeting purposes, knowing it's not correct, but we close, we think. How is that represented ultimately when we compare next year, when we compare budgeted amount to actuals? Then you know, the reserve we, fund is increased by whatever gets so it's put not in the budget at all. It's, it's not in the budget. It's in reserve fund. It's all outside the budget. Yeah. And uh, maybe a difference would be uh, we won't have the audited exact number until sometime after the audit's done. So let's say August. <clears throat> uh, if the voters approve and we put in a certain amount to reduce taxes, that money has to go there. The rest of the money would then we would go to the voters following year and it would be a question for to the voters or a proposal that we had, similar to what we do here with the current cash on hand. And the voters would then approve or or modify or what do you mean what would go to the voters? Next year, when you do the budget, present to the voters, you'll have this same discussion and it will be a known number if it's an audited number. Prior and year end, fiscal year end. Yeah. 
and you will either do as a, as an article and say you know we have an article with proposals where the money goes and the you know the exposure there is the voters may change it or you'll have it in a format in, in your budget showing where you want to uh, propose putting it and then the voters would hover down your budget but you will have a known number next year and this is well the thing is we have a known number from this past year too and the difference is that we had a budgeted line to capture that money knowing that the a dollar amount that they voted on the bit in the budget push last year doesn't match what the actual number was exactly. It doesn't matter because we had accounted for those funds. And if we, last year, it was a little different than the way we used to do it when we had town meetings because there wasn't gonna be an opportunity for voters to change it. They weren't even, you know, they were just an up or down Australian ballot because of COVID. This year, we're going to be going before the voters, and you know I think the most transparency is possible should, with the cash on hand. You know that's been a uh, a point of contention between some with some voters. That we ought to try to accommodate that, being as transparent as possible on what we want to do with that cash on hand. Either. I would I would propose either going back to the way we used to do it and just have it at the end of the budget and with and when you down through explaining the budget, you point out to the voters this is what we anticipate for cash on hand and this is what we uh, are proposing it be applied to. Um, it, with the understanding that when you approve the budget, this is where the money's going to go. Sometimes you might hear some feedback from voters. They don't necessarily approve of giving so much money to one reserve fund versus another or what have you. Um, and we did one year with our cash on hand. The voters requested that we put more to our bridge reserve fund because they wanted work done on the covered bridge. And so the board, although they weren't obligated, they took it under advisement and they did put the money there. But I think having that transparency so the voters can see it and have a say in it, they're, they've requested it. I think there's value there. Yeah, and they've requested it in terms of visibility somewhere, not requesting it explicitly in an article. No, no, they have not. So you're just talking about during town meeting covering the proposed reservation. When you pretty much as it is here, but these proposed reservations are shown in the budget. Right. Yeah, we would do that. So you would show zeros on those budget lines. I would not put the money in and take the money out. I would just leave it at the at the bottom. Show it at the end. Show it at the end. That's why we but not to always did it, budget. but not build it into the budget. And not even build it into reserve or anything. Just leave it there. Just leave it there, and then when the voters approve it. That's where the money goes. And we are, Rosemary, do you have an, any idea of when the audit is actually going to, it'll obviously be after town meeting, but it'll probably be before the beginning of the next fiscal wow. year. So at the, the, at my suggestion would be to take the audited number because we're going to have one this year. Right. Right. And at that point, actually transfer the money based on the audited figure into the reserve funds. Maybe we should be talking about it in terms of percentage of surplus, meaning a set amount to reduce taxes and then everything else based on a percentage of the surplus. That way there really is like a true transparency. And if the audit comes back with a different cash value than what we're projecting, um, you know, there's no room for question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do that, I guess. That's a good Apply idea. Apply a percentage. Yeah. So use use the estimate to come up with a percentage. Yeah, use the estimate so it informs <clears throat> what we think the percentage would be, yes. And then yeah, talk about it in terms of percentage. The, the, 
not to interject more complexity into it, but um, you know, one of the one of the problems is so we go to town meeting and we get to the point of July 1st and on June 15th, the rear end in one of the trucks goes. Right. And it costs $10,000 to replace that. It, it would be nice to be able to have the flexibility as a board to apply part of the surplus to repair that rather than take it out of the budget. If we if we do the way that we're talking about, we're pretty much committing to putting that money into the reserve fund and we would simply have to deal with the broken rear end through the budget process. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the idea of not having, personally, like my opinion is, I don't like the idea of not specifying where we want the surplus to go and just have it be general fund. Like I get the benefit of it, but I feel like it just opens up questions that I don't want open, frankly. I'd rather say that, you know, this is what I'd like, we'd like to see, yeah. I think to address what you're talking about, Duncan, um, if it was a standalone article for cash on hand, I think you're right. We, when the voters designate so much percentage of money, what have you, is going to go in a certain place. We got no choice. That's where it has to go. If it's approved at the end of our budget, and we're saying certain percentage is going to go certain places, because we have uh, the control over the budget, the voters vote the budget number, the total number. But how numbers within the budget go we use our best estimate but things can change and we do have the authority to reallocate funds and we can take some money out of the salt budget and add it to you know preserving records if we had to for some reasons we have that flexibility so i, I think if we did approve it at the end of the budget or have, have it uh, presented there it would still give us that flexibility if a rear end one. Go ahead, Mark. Um, I, I'm leaning in Eric's direction with a little caveat. Um, <clears throat> with this kind of a multi million dollar budget, we need to have flexibility. You know, and I also don't see anything, it's so to me that we ought to have a line in there <clears throat> for money. For matching grants, there's a lot of money floating around out here, and I don't, I didn't see that in there. And I think we should have fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. What number? It's in the most recent copy that you have, okay. at least as a proposal for okay. cash on hand at the end. To be, and we'll put that right in front of the voters and say we're going to set aside fifteen or twenty thousand. It's in black and white. Four thousand five hundred forty-seven. That's the that's the same amount that you. I thought I thought I heard you say earlier that we sh shouldn't be applying that as cash on hand because that's part of the anticipated twenty-three surplus, not part of twenty-two surplus. We should I mean two shay. The numbers don't. Oh yeah, wait, we can't have two conversations. So the numbers don't match up exactly. They don't. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty close, yeah. Well, I would recommend that it be substantially more than four thousand five hundred dollars. I think um, it should be fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. We're not talking numbers; we're talking about how to present it to the voters. So, are you that, okay? And then maybe we put an article that says we would we would like the voters to approve us having fifteen or twenty thousand dollars set aside for the use to draw down grant money. I mean- Of the surplus? Yes. Maybe in a future year, that would be a good reserve fund. So we had a spot to allocate it, what? but just keeping it as cash on hand for grant matches, I guess if, if it wasn't used in that fiscal year, it would show up the next year. Right. Well, yeah, but that's okay. Hold on a second. 
we haven't determined how these potential funds are being allocated yet. So it is a discussion worth having. You can't just shoot it down right off the bat. Um, so Mark, you're basically your ask is to move those money around from lines 477 to 481 so that we're funding um, map grant matches. Yes. In yeah, the $20,000 match. range. Which means it would reduce from building grounds, reappraisal, and capital equipment if the board, if we stop with 125,000 to reduce taxes, and the board is willing to have that conversation. Yeah. And we, for now, so essentially, we will be zeroing out line 123, right, Eric? 123. Is that the uh, other reserve? That's the estimated fund balance for cost offset. Right. Yeah, we would take that out. That's a new line item this year. Yes, okay. which does show better what's reducing taxes and what's cost offset but after it was approved. And and then 153. Are, are we all in agreement here that these should be zeroed out? I think, I, I think we are. I, I, or are we not? I confess to paying, having paid attention to something else. And been, catching up. Didn't hear what you said. Sorry. Well, I, well, I'd love to talk about cost proposed allocations. I'm wondering if uh, line one. 23 should be zeroed out. One what? 123. 123. Yeah. Is the added line for uh fund balance to cost offset. Yeah. So in proposal to the voters, does the board want that zeroed out along with where was I now? 153. 153 reappraisal fund. And where's the highway fund? One two oh seven. The three no, lines. Like, no, that's small equipment per, per current year. Isn't that uh, how buildings and grounds right, I'm is sorry, funded? Um, 400, line 400 in the current budget. It was 398 in the, the previous one. So should those be showing? No. I don't think so. If you're not going to put the money in, money out. We should renew both. But those are showing more than so we zero them, but we the total on 123. You don't totally zero them. Out. No, you yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Right. So your your line 153, Eben, which is in there now at 45.5, that had been in there at 13,000. Uh, reappraisal would be coming down by 32. 32.5. Five. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, if if we do what we're talking about, that line forty four oh. five would go to thirteen k thirteen thousand. Which which is one fifty three. There is a handy note. It says thirty two point five pounds yes. coh. Yeah. So that line item would be reduced by thirty two five. Ryan, what were you going to say? Um, before we go too far down this way. Um, the way we had done it in previous years, this was an attempt to increase the transparency from that. We had received comments from the public before that the method we were using was not sufficiently transparent. So our, this was our attempt to incorporate it into the budget because whether it's complicated or not, it is all in front of you in the budget. I'm not trying to deny that it's not very complicated, but it is all there. Um, the article, I think, would be would reduce the flexibility of the board, but I think that would be the most transparent option that we could do because the voters would have direct say on exactly what we do with it. Um, I just wanted to give that as a, a little bit of history about what 
what led us to this was more than just COVID. It was also uh, a request. And, and I don't disagree that it does, it does clearly meet the goal of getting voter approval for applying the surplus. My concern is having done that, you're pretty much saying that's where it is in the budget. If I, as a voter, want you to do something different, then I have to propose a budget amendment to reduce a, and, and again, according to David Williams, theory of the universe, we can, as voters, we can't say, I want to reduce line item right. 207 by X. All I can do is say, I want, I propose to reduce the budget by X. And then I really don't, that doesn't, all that does is reduce the budget. It doesn't really indicate where as a voter, I would like to see you apply that surplus. Yeah, I think the point about having visibility though is that important. If that's the feedback and that was the reason it was built into the budget, I think our takeaway just needs to be to make sure that we're very transparent about the intent so that we can be as clear as possible with voters. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't remove it from the budget. It just means that let's make sure that we're doing our best to communicate the expectation. Thank you, Beth. I think that, that says it really well. It's, I did not mean to say that one way or another was better, but that this the, the reason we attempted this way was to increase transparency. We can say whether it was effective or not, but yeah. I'm still with you. Now we're in a history, we're in a history pickle. Leave it there. Well, we're not a pickle. We just need to make sure that we're really clear. That's all. The voters voted us in. They trust us. Mark, speak up. I'm with Eric. I just think we should we we should have this as we did in the past. It should be at the, at the end of the budget, and it should show show this reserves and. Give us the flexibility. I mean, uh, maybe I, I, would... I like the transparency, but I also think that people trust us, and I don't think we're being egregious. So maybe if we did something like at the end of the budget, saying amount to reduce taxes is one hundred is one hundred and twenty five thousand. Like I, period. I, I like your percent thing. And and then we also say the expected balance, and I think we could just write this out. The expected balance is X number of dollars. Mm -hmm. Right, the board is thinking this will likely be applied by X percent to this, X percent to this, X percent to this, so that we're not committing. We're saying this is what the view is right now. Also recognizing kind of a new board is coming in. Um, so it's doing a bunch of things and it is setting expectation. It's not committing, we're not committing to it, but we're just saying this is where our expectation is. I, I can work with that. I think it's such a funny box that we're in, though, because somebody can stand up on the floor and say, I want to cut $75,000 out of the budget. And we we can pick and choose where to cut it. Or somebody could stand up on the floor and say, I think we need to raise another $100,000. I want to increase your budget. Right. No, you can't increase it. Dave won't allow it. Dave won't allow you to increase the budget only to cut it. Well, Dave needs to change his mind on that. I mean, how can that possibly That's, be rational? Because the be, ruling because the town's been warned. warned. Unless he's challenged, it's his ruling. And he's never allowed it because, in his explanation, if other voters had realized you were going to, they might be happy with what we proposed, but if they realized we were going to raise the budget by 100000 they might be here at this week. Well, there'd be a ton of voters that would be pissed off if they cut it. Let's Right, that that's, goes both ways. If I'm we, just going by if, his rule. If ruling. we decide to get rid, if somebody from the floor decides to cut two hundred thousand out and get rid of the recreation budget, I think there'd be a turnout of people that would be revoting the budget. It would take a, a petition to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, the big question to me, I think we're all in agreement to present it at the end of the budget as transparent as absolutely possible, understanding that it's advisory and the board generally accepts that. 
the question is still, do we cut the proposed surplus out of the line items or not? That's where I was going. That's I would say I would yes. For, okay, yeah. so that would mean that line 400 would be reduced by $12,500. Correct. Correct? Yep. Are you, are you with us, Brian? I understand past transparency voters wanted it. Yeah, but we're not repeating that conversation. So what are we reducing? Say the lines again and the amount. It would be 400. And that's going down to 30. It would be reduced by a, an amount of $12,400. Right. Can you 500. say what the line name is too, please? Just to uh, make sure. Highway Capital Equipment. Thank you. That would also mean that 207, which would be small equipment purchase current year, which actually funds buildings and grounds. I jump all over. I haven't literally just flipping. Sorry. I can do it from the beginning if we want. No. Nope. There's only three items. No, nope. I'm just gonna do it myself. No. Nope. That would be reduced by thirty-five thousand dollars. Correct. It would be twenty even. Yep. And the last one working backwards would be line one fifty three reappraisal fund would be reduced 32,500. No, it would be reduced by $32,500 to bring it to $13,000. Yep. Right. I don't know where you put the proposed uh, money for grants. Did you put that in any line, Brian? That was a new line item. Give me two seconds. I think I... It was in contracted services or something like that. Yeah, line 160 contracted services. Um, that was not a good place for it, but I didn't want to. I wanted to balance the budget. And since you hadn't voted on it, I didn't want to create a new line uh, for something that you hadn't voted on. So I well, threw that, it there as a placeholder. That line so I'll cut that one too. Would go to zero. Yeah, correct. The sum of those four lines should be $84,547.97. Correct. Which is shown on one, line 123. Which that should also come out. Line 123 should go all the way to zero. Yes. Because it's not coming in. I like leaving the line in there for future boards because it shows cost offset versus reduced taxes. Uh, but that's. You want to leave the token amount in there? Then? No, you, you can't. Okay. That's the cash yeah. on hand that we're letting the voters vote on. Okay. But once they vote on it, it could be shown in that line throughout the years. So it, at the end, where you were doing the percentages, would we put a, put a line in there for possible grant matches? So, yeah. So we can talk about the percentages. Mm -hmm. I think that could be discussed. And I, I guess I would add that I think percentages are the way to go, but there's going to be somebody that's going to stand up and say, well, how much is that? Yeah. So we should know that as well. If, you know, have it written down or something. Approximate number. Yeah. So right now, the anticipated, the total for everything other than reducing taxes is $84,548. Okay. Okay, which now we get into the other conversation, which includes the 23. Sorry, 84,548. Which I think it should only be $80,313.03. You think it should not include the current year? I don't believe that it should. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. If you're going to start using audited numbers, that's a known number. This 4,000 is just a guess. It's a wild ass guess. Really? It's, it'll, it'll get you out of that. Sense. Time consuming wild guess. Yeah. You, you can we can get to that the conversation too. You can eliminate, eliminate a whole column here, or two columns. Oh my God. The year to date and the estimated final. You could what do you mean? No, you can't eliminate those. Yes, we can. Uh, we we cannot eliminate that's, those. that's a row, not a column. If we are going to an annual audit, we can, we can eliminate the column. We can certainly eliminate the estimated year. 
So hold on a second. You won't need the note. It's a column, not a row, first of all. That's what I was getting stuck on. And secondly, I see what he's um, I think we do need to know. I think we do need to know what our S, what our proposed year end number is going to be, what our projected year end number is going to be, because we have a lot of conversations about what our projections are going to be for this year so that we can figure out our budget for next year. Removing that projection does not provide us with all the information we need for the budgeting process. Well, the only reason we have that discussion agree. is because we want to know what the anticipated. That might be the re only reason that you have that discussion. That is not the only <laughs> reason that I'm having that discussion. We we can certainly include that for our purposes, but I don't think we need to display that in the budget. And I think it becomes if we if we know if we know what our year end surplus is on an ongoing basis, year to year, that estimated year end figure becomes much less important. It depends on how you're using it. And it's still important. We should have so, been in late June. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, let's go yeah. on. But I understand your point about the cash on hand is less important. You don't need it yeah. anymore. You won't have to worry about it. I think we still it's need audited. It. it becomes audited what audited what down. To say about it. If we're really the stewards of our budget, we better be paying attention to what our projected projections are for our line items within our budget. We if, get a monthly report from the treasurer that shows us exactly where we are in our budget. Where so, we are is not the same thing as what our projections are for the year. Okay. So we cannot have this argument because it doesn't matter for tonight's purposes. Um, but right. yeah. Yeah. The projections are not necessarily always accurate. Well, we can start asking. It gives us that visibility to ask questions. If we don't like the way something looks or it doesn't look right to us, it is a sign that we should be asking questions. But we already know that it doesn't look right. That's why Mark asked in the last meeting, we have $200,000 cash on hand. How long did that take? I said one year. One year. Well, we're only expecting four hundred or four thousand. But you're still know. arguing a point that is not going. You're not going to convince me. We don't need projections. Before. I'm arguing that we are not projecting it accurately. We know that because we asked a whole bunch of questions during well, we this budgeting have that project. Conversation. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. We we asked a whole bunch of questions about projections for the year during this budgeting process. A lot of them. And I would argue we could, should be continuing to ask those same questions after we leave these budget discussions. And if we're not, shame on us. Well, that's your perspective. I, I, I think it's much less important. I think it's much more, more important to have an audited fund balance. Let me your room that we do need to be conscious and aware of where we are in the budget. If we're overspending on a line item, you know, that kind of detail and looking at it, what we do not need to do if we start using the audited uh, number mm -hmm. is trying to forecast what the estimated cash on hand is going to be because we won't I be agree. budgeting it. I don't care about that part. Yeah, yeah I agree. So yeah, we still need to be in tune with our budget, and you know we do get monthly reports, and um, I think if we were Kelter, out of Kelter, Kelter on any of the line items, we would then make adjustments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so where we landed, we landed with zeroing out the lines that Evan talked about, both in revenue and expense. Um, talking about keeping the reduced reduction of taxes at one hundred and twenty-five thousand. I haven't heard any discussion about that, so that's fine. Um, and then we need to talk about the percentage of <laughs> how we're going to allocate. We need how we're going to allocate that one. That's the number again. And are we going to use the figure of 205 minus four hundred four thousand whatever? Well, Rosemary, your figure was 205, 286, 52, right? Wait. 205, say it again. 
205-286-52. That's what Rosemary came up with in, in that spreadsheet that we all got. Okay. Yeah. Good. So that, that excludes the estimated 23. But it does or, not exclude the 125,000. So no. I'll just do that. All right, I'll pull that 125 right out of there. Yeah. Okay. I propose just for get the numbers on the table. 40% for buildings ground, 40% for reappraisal, and 20 remain 20% for capital proof. Here's my grant money. Do you have oh, some? You want grant money? Okay. Uh, Do 10 and 10. Yeah, 10 and 10. Do you do you have an estimate of what the dollar amounts of those are? are? I don't, but I think it should be pretty I close can, to what the numbers are here. Hold on one second. Yes, times four. So that would put thirty thousand for oops forty two thousand for at forty percent, I should say first. Forty two thousand one hundred and fifteen dollars for buildings and grounds at twenty percent correct it. half of that. Forty so percent then. At twenty percent, it'll be sixteen thousand fifty-seven dollars. How much? Sixteen. Sixteen thousand. But you, you said forty percent was how much? Thirty-two thousand one hundred. I thought you said forty-two. That's why I'm confused. Forty percent. Forty percent. Okay, it's thirty-two. It's three two one one five. That's forty percent. Three two one one five. Three, two, one, five, three, two. 20% is 16057. Okay, 16057. So that's. Ready? I'm just going to give you a whole bunch of numbers. I, I hear you. 30% is 24068. And 10% is um, 8029. 8029. Um, Rosemary. The tax anticipation fund we had talked about previously, that's looking uh, relatively healthy. If we approve the fire contract that's in our hands, there'll be an extra 30,000 needed before we collect taxes. Is that going to be fine? Yeah. Okay. That fund currently has 290,780. Yeah, it's healthy, <laughs> but there's a lot of bills before. So Beth, if we do anything comes in. 33, 33, 33. We're we're right about um 25, 25, 20, well, whatever. 20, 7. 20, yeah, 26, 26495. What, what that's, that's what I that's what I support. And that way um we have a little bit more. For only three or for four, though, we have four. We have four items listed. We have buildings and grounds. We have reappraisal, capital equipment, and community grants. Those are the four things we have listed. So I'm thinking what Eric was doing, what I thought you were doing originally was the first two were getting 40%, and the bottom two were getting 20%. I would move to 33 33 and 33, the bottom two would be 16.75 or something. What's the bottom two more? The bottom two are- Grants and capital equipment. Grant and capital equipment. I just think that, so there's so much federal money sloshing around. The state is trying to get us this money. I'm worried that we're gonna walk away from an 80, 10, 80 20 match because we lack 5,000 bucks. So just to throw a loop in things, where my head's at is 50% being proposed for the reappraisal fund. For which fund? Reappraisal reserve fund. Okay. 50% of, 50 of the 84. 50% of the 84. Okay. So that's 42. And change and then 20 percent to buildings and grounds 15 percent to capital equipment and 15 percent for community grants it does reduce buildings and grounds but that reappraisal you can speak to how expensive it is and i think it's coming too fast unless the state changes 
I talked to noise today, and there's going to be pushback. The state's going to have to change. Um, uh, so uh, buildings and grounds. Be, if we did that, and we did fifty percent of buildings and grounds, it'd be forty thousand oh, dollars. You said fifty to reappraise it, didn't you? Yes. Yes, you're right. Oh, okay. I have it backwards. So reappraisal would be um, four zero one four three. Um, buildings and grounds would be 16057. And capital and community grants would be 12043. Each sign of 84 is 42, now 40. Say that again? Isn't 50% of 84 42? It's not 84, it's 80,000. Two hundred and eighty-seven dollars. Okay. Well, I have what else? That four thousand. That's four. Yes, it's a track of four thousand out there. And I, I would just like to say, I think there's some value to what Evan's proposing. Currently, if I'm wrong, Rosemary, our our CLA is down to eighty-seven percent. Eighty-five percent is where we get the letter to re uh, to begin the process for reappraisal. Is it eighty-five or seventy-five? I thought they had head to an E. I think they changed it. I don't want to get the I think they changed it. It was 80 for a long time. I think it's 85 now. But in in either case, we're we're nudging quickly to the point of needing a reappraisal. I would argue, Duncan, that the state is aware of this and they're super aware that you can't get people to do reappraisals. They're just not out there. So we're going to get a lot of leniency from the state. And while I, I would like I think to think, you're right, right. I think the state's going to have to make some adjustments. Our fund is so underfunded mm -hmm. that it would take us a few years still to get right. We have a couple hundred thousand to go before we. Yeah, yeah. no, I understand. So, that. you know, maybe the Evans proposal getting 40,000 in that fund would be a good way to get it start going, getting back up. I think you're going to have the same discussion next year, year two, right? Because there's what forty four thousand in it right now, or something like that. Well, I'm still sticking to that. I think that we should have money to draw down federal money. I think, and, I think which I propose fifteen percent. So right, and I'm I'm asking. So you're proposing fifteen percent, which isn't that far from my thirty thirty thirty. Which would be twelve thousand forty three dollars, right? You can't have 30, 30, 30. 30, 30 four 30, items. 30. There's 30. four items. I know. <laughs> the bottom two are both together. But that's fine. It's perfectly fine. I'm I'm with you, Evan. I'm with you. Instead of 15%, I want 16.2%. Yes. Yes. So it's only a, I mean, the difference between the two is just, um, it's it, fine. I, not much. Money. Yeah. I'm supportive. Okay. So we're going to land on 20% for building the, Buildings and grounds, 50% for reappraisal, 15 for capital, and 15 for grants. And these are proposed. Oh. Yes, I'm happy with them. I would suggest that the wording on the grant match becomes fairly important because all the other things are reserve funds. And the grant match is not a reserve fund, it's no, not even a line item in the budget. Yeah. Because, Duncan, what I don't want to do is tie our hands if we need $20,000 to draw down $200,000. And I, I sympathize with what you're saying. I agree with it completely. My concern and complaint about all of this is I don't think there is a lot of flexibility. The, the money that was raised, the money that is now surplus was raised in last year's budget. Mm -hmm. It was raised for a specific purpose. It was not spent on that purpose. It is not a rainy day fund. It's not a sunshine fund. It's not a discretionary fund. It is the taxpayer's money. And if they tell us they want to apply 200000 to reduce taxes, I don't think that's discretionary on our part. If they tell us, why don't you think that? Is that because it's not it's not like the budget it is it is money that was raised in a prior tax year in a budget 
which was not spent. And it is, unless we, it, we could ask them, will the voters authorize the, the select board to use their discretion in how the surplus is spent? We could do that. Well, that's kind of what we're doing right here. Well, no, I don't yeah, think it is. I disagree with you. Okay, oh, Rosemary, on the whole discuss, the whole point of the grant match not having a reserve, having an actual fund or a reserve fund, like what are your thoughts on that? Like what do we need to be careful of? I guess is more my question. What happens to that money if there is no grants? We don't spend it. So what happens to that money? Cash on hand for next yeah. budget. Yeah. And it's not in a reserve fund. So, but it's not in a reserve fund. So it's very difficult to track. Where would you cost code it to? Right. That's right. Maybe we should add an article to ask if there should be a reserve fund for grant match money. I think an article is not a bad way to go. Or alternatively, we could put, we could add a line item into the budget, grant fund match or grant fund contingency, fund it with X amount of dollars and increase the amount that we were proposing to reduce taxes by that same amount. So it would be net, right, right. you know, the net would be. We don't have to worry about a percentage of cash on hand, we just have it built into the budget. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. And if you do it that way, it'd be a permanent thing. It would be a line item. It would be a line item. You decide budget. every year, I want you to the fund. Yes. And I like it, that idea better. At the end of the year, you if like we that did, idea better too? I think it makes some sense because at the end of the year, if we didn't spend that money on the grant match, you could reserve it out as you know a a non reserve fund reservation, um, and it, you know yeah. it could be available. Yeah. Okay. And that gives you the flexibility you're looking for, Marcus. Are there any concerns about that? If she, if we don't spend it, and she reserves it out, then like it did to the paving, like the paving, yeah, it just kind of like hold over, like the paving, yeah, okay, and that gives you the flexibility you're looking for. Okay, like I, I, I can buy down that. I just yeah. wanted clarity about perpetuity. Was it like forever? Oh, well, it's just the following year if we have. Okay. Okay. Um. We don't want to buy the next select for tans. No. Brian, will you add a line to that, please? For grant match. So do we all want to use the same? Um, well, number? sorry, I didn't mean to just ask you to do that. Is everyone okay with that? I am. I am. Yeah. Okay, good. We have, uh, it doesn't matter at this point. Which I love. Doesn't matter what just, you think. I'll answer before Evan can right. <laughs> um, We don't need a vote. So, and in that case, is everybody okay with using the twelve thousand forty-three dollars as the funding for that line? I am. Yep. And then we would add twelve thousand to the one twenty-five. Yes. To reduce mm -hmm. taxes. Yes. Why? Why? So it's a net. If you it'll net as well, soon as we have it. It'll reduce our cash on hand anyway. Right. Yeah. Well, it would. It wouldn't net out on line one twenty three. It would net out, or I mean, on one, In the total budget on one twenty two. It would yeah, net out on one twenty three. Yeah. But you're adding it to to propose. So you want you want if you don't if you don't add the twelve oh four three to the one twenty five, you are raising. An additional twelve thousand dollars in taxes. Wow. Uh, this I reverse think. logic, you've got me confused now. What a tangled web. <laughs> if you if you totally remove four eighty one and add a line item somewhere in the budget for uh, matching grants, put a number in there, and then then it would increase your uh, amount. It would increase the bottom line unless we apply it. We take a little bit more than one hundred twenty-five thousand to reduce tax. But this this is where my argument is with this new budget version that we have, where it has to reduce taxes and to cost offset. I would say it should be in the cost offset revenue line, not reduce taxes line. Well, if we do that, we're going back to where we were before. 
Hmm? Aren't we already? If you're adding it to like 125? No, we're not. It's all because we can just, no, because we can include it in the cash on hand applied to taxes and then our percentages for the other items are, are um, it feels like we're lying to the voters. We're going to reduce taxes by this amount, but we're going to keep it in a reserve. Well, what we're doing is there's no reserve. But you're not. You're, you're taking it out of the reserve and applying it to an amount to reduce taxes to offset the line item grant. Basically, you're increasing the budget if we add this new line item. Yes, you are. And you're not, also increasing the amount to reduce taxes. Not if we just added a line item with zero dollars in it. If you add and then at the end of the budget yes. conversation, when it's being proposed to the voters and they approve it, then $12,000. Take that $12. approach. That's what we already did with the other. Yeah. Add the line item, but zero fund it. And then what Evan's saying is just, I mean, in the post here. Essentially, uh, you know, in our reappraisal reserve fund, if we didn't budget putting money into it, we would have zeroed it out. Say that again. In the reappraisal reserve fund, one thing that we changed was subtracting thirty two thousand five hundred from that line item mm -hmm. because we are using thirteen thousand uh, dollars of taxpayer money to inject into that. But we're proposing adding, but we're talking about showing it as thirteen thousand, proposing it being added, and then it would show up. Right. Yeah. So we can do it. my question was which line under revenue does it show up under? Right. Uh, I like my idea better than yours, but. Yeah. It's probably half a dozen six of one or the other. I yeah, but one of the sixes thing. is a lot bigger. What's that? One of the sixes is a lot bigger. Yeah, but who cares? Just increase, we're upping that out to reduce taxes. Yes, one, one way or the other. Who cares is the future board member? Because I had to ask, well, last year we proposed a hundred thousand dollars to reduce taxes, but we're showing that we spent one hundred and seventy-seven thousand four hundred five dollars two cents to reduce taxes. Well, that's not necessarily true. That's not really what we, we did. proposed. We used a hundred thousand dollars to reduce taxes. We used seventy-seven thousand four hundred and five and two cents to reduce future costs by putting in reserve funds to apply res to the reserve funds. Okay. One of the rare times I'm with Evan on this. That was, and if Mark can agree with me, this matter should be over. <laughs> yeah, that was essentially what I put in my email this morning. That's that really we spent a hundred thousand reduced taxes, the rest of it went to reserve funds. It's important for transparency, it, it will reduce future taxes. But if my question to you, Evan, is if it's in the but if we add a line item grant fund contingency and we fund that. Does it really matter whether we increase the amount applied to the budget to reduce taxes? Because essentially that line on it becomes part of the budget. It doesn't, it's it's because it's not a reserve fund. The, uh, the difference. I think that there needs to be an article for a reserve fund to roll over the surplus from that into a reserve fund. I guess maybe that's why it matters more to me. So let's just do it. Let's put an article for the reserve fund. And if the article doesn't pass, I'll be shocked if it doesn't, but if it doesn't pass, then we don't use that 15% overage. We figure out another way to have grant match money, which I don't really love either, Mark. I can already hear you grumbling. I hear you on the grumble, but um, I think we need a reserve fund for grant, grant, grant match based on all the discussion we're having. if Because if we're just gonna use that offset line over and over again, like that doesn't change the confusion. And if we don't have another place in the revenue to put it, <coughs> we're doing all the things we just talked about not wanting to do. That was well put. So for, for my limited tea brain here, which is 
having a hard time. Are you suggesting that we add an article to this year's warning? Shall the voters establish a grant fund match reserve fund? Yes. And Rosemary likes that too. To be funded by to be funded by year end balance from the line items in the budget. Cash surplus or other means. Yeah. I mean I think I think to be funded the thing is it could be I don't know all the funding sources and I wouldn't want to limit their funding possibilities. But saying, we have to specify. We have to specify. So fine for for donations, maybe it's donations and surplus cash on hand and I don't know. I guess I would maybe you instead of a cash on you know putting that in as part of a funding source that we use a uh, we establish a line item that way every future board can choose to fund it or not, or not. and any money not used like similar to the emergency management fund. Any That's part fund, of the budgeting process yeah. and not surplus. I would rather see it. Yeah, not even a budget. go there with surplus. Because yeah. then if yeah. there's no surplus, you have no You're funding. Right. Okay. Fine. Found the so set of so with, with this um warning that you're proposing, are you proposing putting a number in or a percent in or Need. establishing the fund just establishing the fund which so we that, would have to add it to our budget in order to fund the reserve funds this year yes right. <laughs> so you're really saying do both yeah you're saying well i think we have to do both put a put a line item in fund the line item and ask the voters for authorization to establish a reserve fund. Can you put the line item in before? I guess, yeah, yeah, you can. Is that as well? Yeah, because a voter could say, I, you know, I propose, for, you know, ten thousand dollars less, and we, I want you to eliminate that line. So an hour later, and come back for the budget. <laughs> well, we just this say. Is all budget. <laughs> well, I think this was an important discussion. I think it is because I. Other than these items, I really am ready to say if we do everything that Evan talked about, reducing those items, I'm, I'm, I think the budget's okay. Um, we have to figure out what we're doing about economic development for sure. We need to land on it. And if we land on it, I'm okay with it too. I did have some other minor things, but I'm really not worried about them. I'd like to uh, land on it being in the warning. You like Just to a quick comment. Um, the last of the petitions will come in after this meeting or could come in after this meeting. So we will have to have at least a brief meeting. So yeah. whatever changes you want to suggest tonight, you don't have to actually approve the budget until you get a chance to see them with whatever changes you're asking for right now. Yeah. Um, and we need to finish the budget tonight. Yeah. And yeah. I, I would suggest that we try to finish the budget tonight and then it asked Susan to do a once over, make sure everything's adding up correctly. I've done that too, and I agree, Susan. Also, we would love for her to do that. If she More could. Honest, the better. Um, yeah, but I've done that too, and I have sent a few minor formula things to Brian, um, but not much. Um, okay, so you're for the economic development, you're saying you want it to be an article, yes, yes, it is okay. Uh, proposed. Yeah, and not built into the budget right now. Instead, be the article. And check. Yeah, I I'm okay with that. You. Yeah. All right, so we landed on that. You didn't even ask me. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so the one week to the budget, you said that that was a reservation, and we do have an answer on that. Do we want to add a line item for grant matching funds and just put $500 in it for now until we get order approval to either like $500 of tax money, not surplus. So that way we had the line item. 
<laughs> and when we propose to the voters, they want to have a reserve fund, there would be a line item name attached to it. Yes. I'm game with that. I don't know about five years, but whatever, as long as there's a line there with something in it. It seems like a drastic reduction from the 15,000 I won. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, democracy in action. The thing is, if you want there to be an article in the warning of how it needs to be funded and you want that type of line item, you need to have the line item in the budget. I understand. And put a nominal amount. Yeah, put it, I understand. And then you can have a conversation about proposed reserve funds. I'm, I'm, I, or I, surplus. Yeah, I'm not as confused as I was when I first walked in here. Boy, <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more confused. <laughs> oh, okay. Can we get a third consensus on that? Yeah. Yeah. I think all right. I think we're all good with that. Brian. Well, that's you... consensus at five hundred dollars. <laughs> yep. Great. Adding a line item. Adding yeah. A line Adding a line item, item with five hundred dollars, also making an article for the grant match fund, whatever we name or, or something. You know, community development fund or whatever we call no, it. No, grant match. no, grant match. Grant match. Okay. Grant match. And also, um, on the grant match, I think our funding resources should be surplus as one of the items listed to give Agreed. flexibility to everybody. Yep. So at the percentages so that. No, not that a percentage. No, for the article for establishing the reserve fund, the funding sources should be that are allowed should be surplus budget lines and other donations yes other donations i like that because mark's preparing to donate to it yeah I see that. well Preparing. it could be um, the thing what, uh, or endowments i think like i think we should have endowments in there too I mean, that's a pop when i'm rich someday maybe i'll leave an endowment <laughs> right <laughs> We also want to thank, uh, it's a highly unusual circumstance, but the ARPA funds, first time I have ever seen federal money able to be used as a federal match. So uh, I wonder if there's some way to, highly unlikely it's ever going to come up again, but if it should come up, if we had the ability to put some of that matching money into the fund, and you have grants in. Is ARPA considered a grant? No, it's not. No, it's not really. It's, it's bacon. So can you a step can you say federal funds as a funding source or grant and grants as a funding source? Even though it's highly unlikely that a grant would allow for money to go into a reserve fund. Is that possible? Probably not, Rosemary. Okay. Do we answer? consistent purpose for specific yeah okay okay yeah sometimes don't spend all the money that's in that yeah okay we should have schedule um, in our agenda a few other communities are talking about how to use arpa and reserve funds i can check what language they're tossing around so we might be able to borrow some language for that Okay, if that's the case, then for this grant match fund, we should call out ARPA in our article, at least our draft article. Uh, and then in between now and then, you can just confirm that the possibility is a funding source. I had one other budget related question. Do we want to talk about budget stuff? All right, let's do it. So, and Brian probably knows the answer to this. Um, I candidly got confused when I looked at the capital reserves that showed excavator versus not showing excavator. Mm -hmm. um, and the dollar amount being applied to the budget essentially was the same in both. So uh, what I wanna make sure is that the budget, the capital budget that we display is not the one that has the excavator in it because I think that needs more discussion at the board. And that's, I guess, that's a, both a comment and a question. 
Yeah. Which one are we displaying? Uh, the one worked into the budget right now does not include the excavator. It, it is absent in the current budget. Okay. Yes, that's certainly true of the dollar amounts being applied to the budget. Um, I, I just want to make sure that the but that somehow that spreadsheet that shows the excavator in it doesn't get put in the town report. Uh, are we going to, is that on the discussion for tonight? I was hoping to discuss it as part of our budget discussion. Okay, well, um, okay. I just want to add, you know, an excavator would be a major piece of equipment and we might be putting the horse ahead of the car here. And I believe we probably uh, at or overdo on the, uh, uh, the uh, large equipment reserve or the, what do we call it now? Capital budget. Capital, capital budget plan for ma uh, major equipment. And in that, when you develop that plan is when you go into these discussions on what kind of equipment you're going to have in the in the town, and that's the proper place that that discussion should happen. And you would have a a cost benefit analysis pre presented, showing what the benefits, what the costs are, different scenarios, and uh, you make a decision from there. Go forward on whether you want to include it. If you decide to include it, then you come back to the reserve fund and. And build it in and, and make sure it's funded. But we're we're all doing a little bit of the horse ahead of the car here, I think. And and I will say that not to say that an excavator might be justified, but this is something we have looked at in the past. And after looking at the uh, cost of maintaining an excavator versus uh, you know using a contractor. And we also even, and that was with a track model, which obviously you gotta ship around to everything, everywhere. We also looked at a rubber tire excavator. And I think the guys even had one to try out for a while and it just wasn't practical, it didn't work. So at the end, uh, it was at a prior board time, uh, we decided it wasn't cost effective to get an excavator, but that's not to say you shouldn't look at it. You should look at it again. Maybe it is now. Maybe it would be cost effective. And at that time, we thought there was more value in retaining the backhoe because the backhoe would be a backup for the loader if the loader was out of commission. You know, we only have one loader. If we're out of commission with a loader, we have to fill those trucks with sand and the backhoe could work in a pinch. And that's why we we didn't go forward with it some number of years ago. But you know, like I said, that's where the discussion should be taking things is when you run the uh, capital equipment plan. But I don't think it's appropriate to have it here for budget. The budget. Does anybody know the the capital budget and plan is supposed to be updated every five years? Does anybody know off the top of your head where we are in that five-year cycle? We updated it in 2018, I believe it was. 2018, 2019, right around there. We also made a bunch of it, like not a thorough looking and that type of thing, but we made a bunch of changes last year too. Because there's public hearings required for the re-adoption of the public, of the uh, Capital yeah, budget and plan, and presumably all that was done. And so you're saying we'll need to have public meetings about the capital equipment plan next year, regardless of what happens. When you, when you readopt it, you're supposed. I believe Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's supposed to be a public hearing on the capital budget and plan prior to being. And it needs to be adopted. specific to. The capital plan meeting, it couldn't be a select board meeting. No, it no, it could board. be a, it could oh. be a, a warned item at a select board meeting. Ah, okay, certainly. Okay, gotcha. okay. unless you want an extra meeting. No, thank you. Um, so okay, got it. And I agree with 
everyone I think agrees with not having the excavator and the budget. For the, current, the current budget, the current the proposed budget. budget yeah. yeah. We should have a discussion, but. Definitely think it warrants the discussion. Uh, back in September when I had offered to look at this with Brian and Jason, I really wish this was brought up then. But there needs to be a public meeting and it needs to be readopted and everything. Um, but we do all the public transparency and if that's how the reserve fund is set up. Well, if it was adopted in 2018, five year, if it's five year plan, it's gotta be done this year anyway, so. So it's a perfectly opportune time to start talking. That's why you left it. That's why I'm leaving. But, but, you know, from Jason, we should expect a cost benefit analysis uh, uh, presentation on what the benefits and costs are going each different direction. Okay. Bring up the, what me and Brian talked about, Brian, about the cost of the backhoe versus the escalator. Yeah, go ahead, Jason. Well, I, I'm sorry, I can't. No, that's fine. So me and Brian sat down and went over the cost of the escalator and cost to buy a backhoe this year because it's due to a different place. Escalator with a more head and stuff is more than 40, I believe. I do have the quotes in the back row. Cash order was uh, 157, I believe. One lot, and John Deere was 172 for the back row. For back row. So, the only reason we brought this up is because. Say the two once again. 157 from who? Um, the John Deere was first on my email. So the John Deere is 172,900. That's a backup. That's a backup. And a backup from Caterpillar, that's everything the same as what we have now for a backup. Was the 157? Is the is the 157.5 from cat from cat in the excavation I think Brian already has it in the but in the budget if it was excavator the back row is going to be put back in the budget we talked six could go longer years. Uh, village, if we were getting rid of the back row, we would have 92. We wanted to find a bus out of it. There's options for it. The reason that we Brian sat down to go over this was because the back row is being replaced this year. Instead of allocating money for that, we weren't going to replace it. And take like four of the escalators and move them all over. We wouldn't be back in the track and move them all. So, when I add up all of the amounts for the on the capital budget for the excavator line, it comes to 179,785. I thought when we talked earlier about what to do, yeah. we it's, talked about moving the back out ahead one year. I have a completely different question. What were you saying first? Well, you were just saying that you added up the excavator, but it does need to add. What's this? Yeah, okay. Oh, did, did Brian have these numbers at the time of getting this schedule together? And I asked because we're Saying that we it would be seventy seven thousand. Now, granted, that's only eighty percent, probably. But even of the one fifty two and eighty percent town cost, if the village was in lockstep with us for tobacco, it would be one hundred and twenty one thousand. So it'll be fifty thousand higher than we were predicting, which would affect each line item, obviously. <clears throat> Part comes to that they've gone seventy five thousand. They made a panda. 
was joking. I tell you, we should have bought three or four greater. Okay, so we could tell. Um, um, I'm sorry, I couldn't really hear Jason very well. Evan, was your question answered? Um, yeah, I I guess the excavator has uh, costs and benefits with it. Um, but even if we were to stay with the backhoe, so that way we could redo um, capital equipment fund this in 2023 it's not accurate as far as the backhoe which bothers me because we're planning to take out uh, a reserve how much this year total appropriation annual appropriation are we we're planning to take out 166,000 but that would be at minimum if we were to go with a backhoe tonight, ten thousand dollars short on our budget. We would typically adjust our what we take out of the reserve fund to match our expenses. But if we adopt a budget that's not accurate to the voters, I'm worried about accuracy a lot. We have we have some data. I just got a question. I know you threw out some numbers on the tandem replacements. And I guess maybe it's a question for Brian. What we have in front of us for the reserve fund, is that taking into account some of the numbers that Jason's throwing out with the what the SBA cost repl or replacement cost would be for equipment? No, we didn't have those when I, I drew up that reserve. The, the spreadsheet that you're looking at. Now that we've got them, we'll update it. And yeah, our costs are going to rise. We well, we sort of need to know that cost because we have to allocate how much is going to be uh, put in to keep the fund healthy. And if we don't have accurate numbers on replacement costs and they go out across the, uh, the paper here, uh, we got to have accurate numbers on what the replacement costs are so we know how much to keep that fund healthy and how much to contribute every year starting this year with our proposed budget. Now that we have the updated yeah. funds, we'll have, or the updated amounts, we'll update the, the fund spreadsheet and as well. That means we have to change, we should have to change our allocation. And we, we may have to if we found that the fund is reserve funds aren't going to be healthy. Well, I don't think we can, can we? It just increases by seven thousand dollars, and then surplus cash can be put in above that. That was what we had projected the amount that needed to be increased to keep the fund healthy. But if the increase of the prices for replacement have gone up that substantial. We're not going to be healthy out here a few years. Well, they're going to come back down in cost. They are. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> who you been talking to? Salvage so, spoken over here. <laughs> so, so the the salvage cost or used price would go up as well. I just don't know in proportion what that would go up. Um, and like some of these low points could actually be negative depending upon cost replacement being accurate. I'd also like to point out that there's two 29, 30 years that should be corrected, but. One other thing is just the What should be corrected? Mm -hmm. Both John Deere and and uh, yeah. Lincoln's talk group, everything's been going up for on an average, roughly a 5%. 5%? Yeah, for the last year. Per quarter? Even Evan can do that, man. Even Evan, Mark? Yeah. I think I'm pretty good with numbers, thanks. I think you're great with numbers. Thanks. Does well, our regard Regardless of that, if we have up-to-date data, we need to I get think it it's there. very important, Brian, to get that entered. Uh, so absolutely. That we can have good, we, accurate projections. If we look at our schedule, 
We got a tandem being proposed to be replaced next year, 25, 26. And then 26, 27, with two tandems gonna be replaced. And the salt trucks. So the numbers we have here, they, they, may, they don't reflect the numbers you're saying. And our fund may not be, the reserve fund may not be healthy enough to support these right. replacement schedules. Right. Yeah, I actually don't think we should make any changes to anything until we have updated numbers because we've learned, even last year, we learned some of the estimates in here were far off from what the actual costs are these days. And that was before the inflation skyrocketed. So there is a number in the proposed budget for the greater. Are you looking at the are you looking, I'm looking at the capital at the, I'm looking still? at the capital budget? And we haven't we haven't approved a note yet for that, have we? So my question on that is do do you do you know do you have an idea of what the interest rate is on that note is likely to be? Which we need to know real quick because we're taking delivery of the grader in a couple of weeks, aren't we? <laughs> it's free for the first year. It is it okay? Excellent. I'm interest interest rate too, too, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Well, my 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 point is twofold. One is we need to take action very soon on on authorizing a note. Um, we need to know what the interest rate on that note is. Um, and we should also, if the interest rate is above 2%, we should certainly be looking at the municipal equipment loan fund as a possible alternative funding source um, or loan source. Um, so there's a, there's a bunch of things related to the capital budget and plan that I think are in play. Well, this is fun. Maybe I know. So um, I do have a couple of no. Um... So it sounds like Brian and Rosemary need to get together soon so that we know <laughs> what the actual note is going to be. And, and we're, we're going to need to act on that pretty pretty quick. Okay, noted. No pun intended. Um, Brian, if you could call up with Rosemary this week, that would be lovely. Like maybe tomorrow. Yep. Um, just a couple of things on the budget before we move on. That's right. There is um, the reservation reserve fund expense of $500. I didn't see where revenue coming came in for that to offset the reserve fund. Um, reservation reserve fund? Isn't that funded from the- Conservation. Conservation. Oh, you said reservation. But that's I literally have not had a drink today. No. That's a line item to fund that's their problem. <laughs> Isn't that correct, Brian? That's a line item to fund the reserve fund. Correct. We're putting five hundred dollars into their reserve fund. They're not taking anything out. Yeah. Oh, okay. And what about beautification? I have the same question on beautification. And beautification talked... is solely tax funded. Uh, they have. They occasionally get some grants that go over and above their $3,000 budget, but their, their $3,000 budget is solely tax fund. Okay. Uh, and then the next one I have is we had Howard here talking about Tuesday Night Live. He said that Tuesday Night Live was net zero. In our budget, we have revenue of $10,600 and we have expenses of $13,200, which is a $2,600 difference. Uh, the wrong way. Yeah, may I? Uh, we're making the correction on that between Howard's health and my own. We haven't been able to actually get together, uh, but Howard is aware that there's a that that's an issue, and we're correcting it. Okay, we need to not wait for Howard if that is the 
issue. I think we need to make assumptions based on prior year um, actuals. And by the way, looking at prior year actuals, it looks to me like we the town's actually been funding TNL for a little while. But Rosemary's saying we haven't been. So like the numbers just don't look right to me in that case. Uh, so anyway, so if you could act on rectifying that net zero, that would be lovely. So you're saying the revenue doesn't match the expenses? Mm -hmm. Expenses are higher. Expenses are higher. $2,600 higher. Okay. Um, and then, and then historical society, the Tuesday Night Live resonant revenue over time, right now it's budgeted at 5,000. Over time, over the past three years, it has consistently been above $6,000. Most recently, it's $6,300. Um, I just recommend that we bump it up from 5,000 to 6,000 just to more accurate, accurately reflect their revenue in the budget process. Okay. Uh, but I need to get confirmation from others too. Hope so. Yeah. I think part of the reason is the uncertainty over you know, rain, um, right. COVID, um, there are so many factors that can influence the take on any given night, and it can vary wildly. This year they did well. They, but they rang out a, few, a couple times this year. They did, yeah. and they've consistently done well over time. Yeah. Yeah. And they adjusted the prices too, didn't they, last year? I think they bumped the prices up a little bit, yeah. And they have a hell of a lot of sponsors. I mean, would it would still be a little bit conservative? It would West still be conservative. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, my suggestion would be, I'm I'm okay with doing it. I, my suggestion would be to, that somebody should contact the historical society and let them know that that change was made. Yep. Apparently. Okay. Um, Brian, will you please add that to your list too and copy me on that one if you don't mind? Okay. Okay. Um, that's all I've got. I have other stuff that doesn't matter. I, I had one question. Um, Brian did um, update the year end figure on the payment to reflect the contracted price, mm -hmm. but that doesn't, if you if you look at what's being brought in from reserved funds or funds that were set aside, there's a difference between, there's, there's the, the fund is healthier. The amount that is set aside is more than we anticipate spending. So my question is, do we want to reduce that? Well, do we want to, yeah, do we, do we want to spend more? Um, on paving, which you almost always do. Contract price never comes in at exactly what the contract price is. What's the difference? Do you know? I don't right? remember. It's it's a fair amount. You have one sixty. What do you have? One. Uh, I have that here somewhere. So in that paving set aside. So line 367 is paving maintenance. Um, so paving reserves right now, Rosemary has set aside 163,680. And if you look at the revenue line item that he added obligated funds, he's bringing in 108,495. The combination of that plus last year the hundred thousand is the contracted amount for paving. So there's 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 a fair amount, you know, there's fifty thousand dollars still available for paving. Because my my question hypothetically is, are we okay with it? Brian did exactly what we asked him to do. My question is, uh, are we doing? Do we want to do that? Do, yeah. do we do we want to add a little bit more to that so that it would enable us to do a little more paving? Jason looked pretty enthusiastic for a second there when we first started talking about it. I would like to do more paving. There's more that can benefit from putting money. 
And do you think do you think we could do that in the current in the current budget? They're going to be here anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you just repeat what does the total amount come up to with the hundred thousand current year? Um, current year plus. So under line item fifty eight obligated funds. I think that's right, isn't it, Brian? 108. 108 yes, that is. 495. And in the reserve, Rosemary has set aside, uh, where is it? 160, 163, 680. Okay, let's see where you're. So we could we could essentially do another fifty grand worth of paving ourselves if we had a block. The only thing we'd have to be conscious of you know, if we add fifty thousand to the line item for paving uh, three sixty or three sixty eight, that's going to reduce. Our balance for cash on hand at the end of the year, we're going to be on a negative number. No, it's already this. This is already reserved out. But so, that's already shown in revenue in here, right? In the budget, it's already shown as money reserved out, so it doesn't affect the cash on hand amount. Correct, Rosemary? Yeah. Okay, so we don't show it coming in here and going out. Here, we would want to also increase that line item fifty-eight. To, to the one sixty three. To the one sixty three. Okay. Instead of instead yeah. of one oh eight, we'd want to show that as one sixty three yeah. and add another as long as you're increasing the revenue. Yes. Money yes. money out. Okay. Yes. And it's again, I, you know, I can go either way, but um, I just wanted to raise that as a I like it. Yeah. Mark, before I have any answers. I'm with Evan. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's like, what line are we on? What do you think, Evan? What will 50,000 get us? Probably not much. Why are you hesitating your yards? I don't know get us more than that. Am I not allowed to think what that? What is it a mile now? Probably. But if we it won't get us a mind. If we leave that in reserve and only take out the 108 next time we did the like what's the what is that reserve fund balance right now? Well, it's not actually a reserved fund. It's just been reserved. You set you guys set it aside as a dedicated amount last year. Under so what line item? Under it's not it's not a line item. I'm looking at Rosemary's um which is the estimated cash on hand 2022. My eyes are not that good. Uh, I'll show you. Do I have that in heat or is that something? Uh, I don't know if you have it or not. Uh, everybody does have it, but it wasn't printed as part of tonight's packet. So this is oh, uh, this oh, is yeah, yeah. cash on hand paving reserves in 63, 63. And so that's, that's in the checkbook right now. Well, paving reserves is in the checkbook but where did we bring it into the budget last year you, you, last year you, didn't, you didn't last year that that set aside is what you didn't spend right you didn't spend any money oh. the big thing the project that happened last year right but we had alloc we had allocated a hundred thousand in our budget last year mm -hmm. so how do we have cash on hand of 166 from the prior year so there's sixty six thousand from twenty twenty. Sixty three thousand. Okay. All right. Now that I understand now you're okay with this that. meld, I guess. Yeah, it's weirdly untransparent, but so we can continue to carry it forward. <laughs> no, no, it's going to be confusing for the next person. Okay. But it needs to be shown in revenue. Yes. For 2023 estimated final and yes. as expense in 2023 estimated final. Correct. Equally. Well, revenue and expense. 
It would, be, it would increase it by $51,000. I just want to know, are there any more things like this? Where we got this? No, you don't want to know. Damn, fine. I'm Ignorance is bliss. No. <laughs> Yeah, extra 50, 60,000. So when that's left over, there, it does not. Wait, wait, wait. I'm literally thinking about what you said. Are there other areas that we should be thinking about? Thank you. With a calm no, everybody just goes, don't worry about it. Um, So when there's money in the budget for paving, for paving and it's unspent, it's just carried through year over year. It's not put in a reserve fund to be taken back out. Yeah. Well, there is no actual pay, paving reserve fund. So uh, I wasn't here. We don't want another reserve fund tonight. I'm copacetic. <laughs> didn't we just shoot this one? Right. Yeah. Say you wanted $220,000, you break it up. Right. And in the accounting system, it's, it's basically allocated to that expense ahead of time. It's weird how it doesn't become cash on hand. A project completion because it's a dedicated yeah it's already allocated you, you, the, you, well you yeah. could say that about any line item right. there's no reserve uh, yeah, we I, we dedicated forty thousand dollars to salt this year that better not show up in cash on hand next year if we only spend 32 that eight better be carried i don't understand what makes this so different in terms of transparency to the taxpayers yeah it's very it's very complicated, but basically, <laughs> I, can't, I, mean, I, I don't get it. To be most cost effective, the bigger the job, the lower the price. So if you combine two budgets, and ideally is is you have a paving project that's around the July June time frame, so that you can go across two budget cycles. Well, I understand that. Okay, yeah. but they can't do the paving then. Yes, so you, now you, you've got to. So, did the taxpayers vote on this at some point? Yeah, they they voted a line item of a hundred thousand for due paving, except for we couldn't get it done in the budget year, so we. But did they? No, they didn't. Did they? Explicitly, no. Did they vote to explicitly keep money in that one line item without <laughs> throwing in any results? That's a good Three point. Three years down I mean, the road. It feels like we should probably have somewhere in this that's being voted on allocated funds that carry over into the following year. Cause that would, that would be the transparency thing we're missing that you're talking about in our budget. And just to be clear, the select board does have the legal authority to dedicate funds outside of the reserve fund process for, for a the particular next, project. For the next year. Yes. yes. I don't know if the select board has the authority to randomly carry money for three years cash cash as without to. showing it anywhere that's why i'm so confused right well i think add it as revenue and expense i think this does actually actually show at the bottom of the budget um, i think this this is incorporated right into the bottom of the budget isn't it yeah. so it's i mean it's shown it's shown where and the very bottom of the budget um that so if you look at the cash on hand, um, you know, paid hold over. over. What line are you looking at? I'm looking at line item. I got four, four or five. Four. Yeah, that one. So four, four or five. Paving hold over one six three six eighty seventy three. So it's in the section that is called reserve funds included. It's in the section that is cash entitled, hand. yeah, cash on hand. Est estimated FY21 and 22 so, cash on hand balance. Very Point confusing. Taken, that <laughs> reserve fund should not be in that title. Right? Yeah. Because to me, that's a reserve fund. Because it literally be says reserve, reserve funds fund. and cash on hand. I'm not a very smart man. So you go spell it out. It shouldn't probably say, it, it probably just could say, yeah, that, that line, that line 432 probably doesn't even need to be in there. Well, it's some sort of a header, but yeah. Well, I mean, the header could be treasurer's uh, FY22 estimated cash on hand. Sure. 
I am copacetic with the budget. Just so what do you think I about do. the specific issue of, of having this 163 rolled in? I already said I was fine with it. Okay. I'm creeped out on how that came to be, but. She okay. has to call um, me, not me. Anything else budget-wise? Does it affect the budget? Jason has his hand up. Go ahead. Jason wants less for capital. Go ahead, Jason. <laughs> Am I talking with the contractor to see what a price for a village with it and mobilize to be with the extra? Extra 50,000, yeah. I think so, yeah. That would yeah. be really sure. Yeah, we are clarifying. Yeah. See what you can get for 50 grand. Yeah. We'd like it to be an eighth of an inch thick. <laughs> Mic micro paving. Okay. Yeah, anything else budget wise? <laughs> Brian, do you have anything else budget wise? Nope. Okay. Um, we are officially not making any more changes to our budget other than the things we talked about tonight we're drawing the line in the sand but and after those minor changes are made susan's okay with reviewing it before we meet for our next meeting after the 19th is that thank you rosemary so do we need to schedule a meeting tonight for the yeah final signing of the warning and whatnot yes we will need to do that yeah um, okay. I would just like to make a comment um, that I, I don't want to go on. I don't want to talk about it. I just want to make a comment um, that I think we need to get to a point where we're looking at in budgeting, meaning the next time we go through this, I intend to be heavy handed in committees and like making sure that commissions and all of the other Big town and outside and the town's groups that represent our town um, that wherever possible we are net zero and if it's not possible it's fine but just that we have some bearings on expectation and um, not watching our revenue go down year after year because we're seeing expenses go up year after year which is to be expected the thing I don't expect to see when I look at a budget is revenue going down year after year? That concerns me a lot. So I just want to say that, put that out there. Um, okay, <laughs> next item, reviewing invoices and orders. Who's supposed to do that before I got here? Tomorrow. Right. You were hoping you missed that. Part, I was hoping that it'd be 10 minutes late would get me all the way. Down. Okay, ready? Um, Alden Brown, referee, basketball, $80. Allegiant Truck Swiper Kit, uh, $324. City Cards, credit card payment for postage programs, library, books on tape, fund, uh, grant fund purchases, office supplies, beautification, and outplay repair and parts. $880. Uh, Emerson Electric Service for the Trailhead Building, $1,343. Jack F. Course, Holcomb Heat Propane, $118.02. James Wallace, Basketball Referee, $80. Lamoille Kennels, Boarding Fees, Animal Control, $95. Morse filling, braving, basketball tournament medals, $116. Um, office business solutions, paper and office supplies, $120, with $120 also due from the village. Daniel Silver, tech service, $289. Staples business credit, office supplies, um, $2,197, and $73.75 due from the village. Uh, Stitzel, Page & Fletcher, Legal Service, $360, TD Bank, Credit Card Payment for Facilities Maintenance and Postage, $366.52. Stacy Waterman, um, Officer Salary, $750. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 treasurer for libraries. Okay, uh, next up. So I didn't hear any questions. Um, review and approved minutes from December 19th and January 5th. Um, I've got a comment from Casey Romero about the January 5th one. There was a place in there where Duncan asked about the state park committee uh, the need to change anything about what was budgeted for that because um, they might have been thinking about using article funds. And he said that um, they were only one of the expenses for, I think he said something about grants they expected to get. And he thought that wasn't accurate. That, it was granted, it was only money they actually had. So he was thinking about changing it to just say that you said the budget doesn't include any ARPA funds. Do you agree? That sounds okay to you guys? I think that's accurate. Okay. Thanks, Donna. Um, does everyone, is everyone okay with that change? Go for it. That's two. One more. Hi. All right. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. But... okay. Fair enough. Motion to approve uh, with the modifications presented December 19th, January 5th. Uh, we have a second. Here. Then we have a second. Any discussion? I'll oh. recuse myself because of the 19th. I wasn't here. Hey, you're recusing from both? Yeah, it's fine. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Me. It was the eye, Duncan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Eyes have it. And Eric abstains. Select board issues and concerns. Are we going to spend the rest of the year on ARPA? <laughs> it's not a. Just do the budget first. Yeah, probably. So I hope that's so. a good chunk of it. I hope so. Okay. Uh, that's my <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yep. Heard. Uh, treasurer's report. What you got, Rosemary? Okay, budget credit report. The date of your first have spent. Say we're what? Say the date where the total budget is forty-seven percent spent. No. And that's a full six months. And is that yes. is that typical rosemary? Are we uh, yeah right. spring is when the highway's been some money. Yeah, so it's fun. But we're not done with this year because it isn't snowy. You had to let season come weeks ago. We're gonna have three of them this year. Okay. Yeah. And taxes, the date were sixty point six percent selected. Total and that is very close to the top. And I believe that a list of the commission gets a list of taxes. And I just want permission to take these to the county claim as well. Anybody that feels left out of the You need a motion or permission? Permission, please. Permission granted from me. Anybody else? Yeah, I agree. Yes. Okay, you got three. Um, Rosemary, for the ones who are less than that, do we do anything just to notify them or ask for permission? We will send them a, a final, I'll get the same final notice, and then hopefully some of them will pay. Okay. But most of those that are under thousand dollars are unlimited mobile homes. I see. Okay. Oh, I had. <clears throat> I don't see any What'd you say our collections were at, at this point in time? 60%. 60. Collected. And there's like a third installment. People are starting to look at third installment, which is really four cool. weeks. You mean, um, like liquor licenses and tobacco and all that. They'll become due, most of them come due in April. Okay. So I think the state has notified people of those. Okay. 
And, and did, should we expect to see an influx for tobacco? What's going on with that? You know, just the store. Okay. And maybe Did they change the form so that we don't actually have to sign them anymore? Yeah, no, 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 no. So you'll just bring to us the list of people that apply to the ARN. And I sent in um change the fellows for the new restaurant. To get all the help, yeah, okay, okay, excellent. Thank you, Rosemary. Mm -hmm. Um, Jason, so this month we've been working on pretty much the same stuff, your maintenance. Uh, the Powerhouse bridge sign will be installed tomorrow. And uh, Bless you. thank you. Bless you. The other two no parking signs for the rail trail and old mill parking will be installed Wednesday. Uh, you might want to save that one that powerhouse bridge sign that's up there because I made it. It could be collectible. You want? <laughs> yeah, he does. He made it. <laughs> that's the sign to take on it. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, you want to donate it to the historical yeah, society? Yeah, historical society. I think I signed the back of it. Well, then it's a money. it's a collector's <laughs> item. Because you guys are too damn cheap to put it to buy it. Go ahead. Sand. Yeah, just get talking over there. And so far, we've used 2,400 2, tons of sand and sixty one tons of salt. And is that average or below? It is for the sand. Salt is good. Thank you. Well. How much of that do you think is you due to using the liquid uh, liquid chloride? A pretty good amount. That's going to bring me to my next okay, task. Thanks. So Evan has asked us periodically to what can we do to save more so Why do you call me out? <laughs> yeah, just to call out. Yeah. yeah. Who's Evan? Yeah. So on the second page, number four. And it's a quote for an additional tank on the side of this filter on the flow bro and uh, from the electrical and the labor that they would need to install it. And our goal is to do to save another 30% or so by using more liquid and less. So, So I have a question about the liquid chloride, and I, I know it kind of doesn't matter because I'm out on Route 15, but I've had to have my brakes changed, um, totally replaced, twice in the last two years, two, two consecutive years because they're rusted out, and the bottom of the frame is getting more and more and more rusted. And all the mechanics are telling me it's because of the liquid chloride that they're using on the roads. I had no idea if that's true or not, but it, it you had any? That is true. Uh, liquid chloride, magnesium chloride, is more corrosive than the salt brine that we're using. And the salt brine that some of the other states use has a chem, uh, an agent in it, either beet juice or molasses to make it stick to the road better, which causes it to stick to your car better. Ours is just a salt water. And it, it's the same as what the salt does naturally. It's just, it doesn't bounce off and doesn't get tracked away. And it acts instantly when you applicate it. Yeah, my, my, my only point is if we may, we may save money as a town, but it may actually cost us all more as car owners <laughs> to the damage done. But, the state, as you you know, as you say, the state's using it. Uh, all the other towns are using it. I, I'm not going to avoid it unless I don't drive on a state highway. So, was the salt truck circuit was it just the fuse box or something? Was that actually prepared under warranty? That is down. We just dropped it off today. But we don't know yet if it's warranty. It sounds like it's very, it's very much going to be warranty because of another town had the same problem. 
uh, local town did what they were saying, but they had to let me know before they could give me any feedback yeah. on it. So and this proposal here. That's not to do with the. No, the repair, but yeah. uh, what you're saying is this will save salt because it's adding more. Yeah, water. yeah. Water. we have another pump and another tank. Right now we can put down roughly, it's usually three gallons a mile that we can have cases. Most of the pump will put out and it's only a hundred gallon tank. So we want to put another tank that is the same thing on the other side of the salter and another pump and another control so it can mark and so it would reduce the concentration. It would reduce us using the granule substance and right. put it more. Because after concentration, he's still he's going to pump double the amount. More he's likely, likely less. Yeah, the liquid's only twenty three point three percent solid. So, does that reduce the surface area it covers? Because uh, the reason I ask is because you know I go up and down Maple Hill in Conso, and like the distribution of it is narrower than I would have thought it would be. And like reducing the granular salt that goes along with it, I just wonder what the what that will mean in terms of the width of the distribution. As far as the, the application of the liquid, you will see a greater amount because right now we're only to put out so much per. Right. Uh, for the average speed of the truck, it's about three miles, or uh, three gallons a course of a mile. Mm -hmm. You do about 13 miles of pavement, it's about 100 gallons. So you can see double of the liquid coming out, and the granule would still be applied, but we're going to shoot it another 30% less to see. But you'd be hitting the other side of the truck with liquid. We'd be, yes, the tank would be on the other side of the salter, but it would still be applicated in the back of the truck. So the, the ice melting pattern in the highway might actually be greater. It will be greater. Than lesser, even though you're applying less salt. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, because of the surface where we're going to be applying, it's going to be a wider track now. Wider. Wider. Still applied to the middle of the road because it doesn't carry out with the, the crown, natural crown of the road. Matt truck can take another eight. Hundred to a thousand pounds. We'll be carrying a solid. Fair enough. Um, so what's the cost? We, we, we yeah, four thousand four hundred and forty-five dollars. Yeah. Second page. Oh, I don't have his report. Yeah, it's there somewhere. I, I'm sure it's in there somewhere. This is what it looks like. It's, it's under five thousand. Here. Okay. Can we handle this? Under planned purchases, it's under a thousand. Oh, it's under five thousand. It's under five thousand. But review planned purchases is our next item, and there's something on here for the <laughs> library as well. Just so, can I, Brian? Did I didn't get it to him because Andy just got me this at noon. Gotcha. <laughs> then I wanted to explain it a little bit more. Do you have anything else, Jason, that you wanted to bring up? Well, just to let you know that I did lay eyes on the grader today. It is there. Where did you see it? I actually saw it. Was yeah. it a picture of it? Or? No, I saw it. It's down in Richmond at the, at the middle of the cab. Did you touch it? Yep. So <laughs> it is. Look it over. <laughs> yeah. That, it would is. that would devalue it right away. All right. stuff is there, so a little pack around the back, whatever that thing is. Yeah, yeah. the, the walking wall's not on yet, but it's, it's in the parking lot. It's it it milk a cat. Mm -hmm. and, I don't know how that is. Wilson, Richmond, Richmond. Yeah, we had to drop the truck off at Allegiance anyway, and it's just not too far. So we wanted to make sure we were going to work this whole. And then the last thing I had was um, I don't know if I included it in the plan purchase, but we <laughs> talked to Evan a little bit about it with uh, an iPad or a tablet for. Yeah, there it is. All right. That's all I had. But if you wanted to explain what it was for briefly. I think it was, uh, yeah, so I've been working with Rob on the Planning Commission, and there's a an app on it that for the real presence and grant work. There, he's doing a he wants to get more uh, road supervisors, foremen into doing it electronically in the field. So there's not so much data that has to be brought back, and 
doing what? Taking pictures, uh, updating the segments, not just that those when I walk on a class board, I can update the segments right there in real time. So, and, yeah, sir. so you, yeah, less pictures and less relying off your memory. So you can go out there in the field and you're doing it instead of having to bring it back and cool. at the office and try to remember what you've seen. You just let the maps on it, it'll delay where culverts are and everything, all that. Would this help? I don't need a century. Would, uh, I would really love to see us come up with a, a capital plan for paving um, based on conditional assessment of, of existing pavement. That is one of my personal goals. The, the iPad was more for this, but I want to have it. That plan that I've that, talked about before. And would, get, the, would this be suitable for that application, you think? I don't. The, the setup that uh, the iPad would be. The program that's going to be installed first on it is mainly for the whole MRGB appliance and stuff, but there would be nothing saying the paving couldn't be put on it as well. And the $20 a month, is that just like cellular data? I believe so. Brian had okay. all the prices. Sounds good. I'm good with your report if, I, if everybody else is. So, do you need action tonight on? Um... This purchase is that what you were looking for? Well, I said we'd we'd deal with that under reviewing plan yeah. purchase. Evan so wants to, but we don't have to. Plan purchase. It doesn't I'm matter either person. way. It's so true. Did, it's true. Not I think somebody asked, purchase. and I'm not sure that I understood the answer. It, it, do you think the the salt brine pump tank setup is an item that? Can be covered under the current air budget. Yeah, into the outside parts. Because see it fit in there well. The winter supply is close to, or I don't want to put it in there. The deer, we're not out of the winter yet, but the outside repairs parts is still a little well off. As a practical matter, I would rather. Have you budget it where it properly belongs, even if it ends up being over on that particular line item? I I just think for for accurate budgeting going forward, that it's better to put it where it really ought to be than to put it in on a line item that doesn't have as much. It is you taken out. Winter, That's just me. Yeah. I have no problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, Duncan. That that is exactly how we would typically handle it. I think what Jason means is that that one will go. That line item will go over, and we can draw a little bit by underspending on a couple other line items, so that in total we're still balanced. Is that what you meant to say? I just wanted to ask because you said Jason meant to say, but I don't know. That's the way that the fast track has been. Yeah, okay, seen. fine. I agree with Duncan that as accurate as we can get is great, but nothing is perfect. And if you need to, you have a budget for a reason that you need to move things around and it's appropriate. <laughs> Do you have anything else, Jason? I don't. Does anyone have anything else for Jason? When are you expecting the grader to actually pull into it, your lot? I told him as soon as they get it done, I prefer to get it on a good day. I did show up down there and still the very to be brought in on a dirty day. Or, you know, the road is being like solid. So they're going to get it all cleaned up and told sunny day when the road drive would be preferred for what we like. Yeah. And you might actually be at the shop, too. Another. Yeah, they've got cut some kind of a 60 day, 90 day warranty on this thing. Yeah, it's a long, it's a long warranty than that, but yeah. Okay. It's 120 days. I just wanted to know that I, you know, get well, it, it comes so. well, you get it in the middle of the winter, you don't use it till May, and all of a sudden you realize that it's not under warranty and it's not working. Yeah, we got an extended warranty for that. I don't have the paper in front of me, but I'm pretty sure it's set up here. 
Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Plan purchases. Thanks, Jason. Uh, All right. So we were adding the uh, adding the uh, uh, salt, uh, the brine spreader and tank that Jason had referenced. Um, we also have a tablet for public works. The cost of um, the tablet itself is going to be less than a thousand dollars, but I still wanted to bring it to the board's attention um, because it's going to obligate us to an ongoing cost of approximately $20 a month. Um, but as Jason described, we think it's going to be a very useful tool for public works. The other item is uh, attic insulation for uh, at the library. The library had submitted a request for uh, quotes to uh, five different local companies and only received one back. Uh, so that's why we only have one quote for that. Are there any questions about the planned purchases? Uh, will the library's insulation affect their ability to buy windows? Because they were talking about buying windows this fiscal year and then using the capital improvement money for next year to replace the windows in the basement. Is this limiting them in any way? Well, Jasmine is you, like asking me, or are you asking? Brian? Well, I originally was asking you, and then it wasn't. You can have Jasmine. Brian's so small over there, you know. He's not as intimidating. Jasmine's got this one, Brian. Okay. Um. No, it will not intimidate. Uh, from Brian, Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to give a long answer? Yeah, you got cellulose, not foam, right, Jasmine? Right. 17.8 right. inches or three inches. Right. Um, yeah, so we would either go for applying for a branch that we just learned about um for the windows. And I think it was sixteen million dollars for Vermont libraries. That you guys got? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it requires a matching between the two many. Um, and so, um, and part of the, I think there were three major things in front of this historic window of your doors. Do you know what your, what your uh, cap will be? Just curious. For that for the, grant. For, yeah, for the Johnson Library grant, like what the, I don't, I don't believe that there is a cap. I think that it will grant based on what we present. We're going to be presenting an automatic. Um, yeah, we're going to be presenting a ADA automatic door from door and the whole. Nice. Okay, our fingers are crossed. Yeah. Okay. If that, don't get the grant for the windows, we plan on purchasing the windows without the install and holding on to them and then forcing my partner to put them in one by the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if that's not the best public, you're on camera. Only support them. Okay, cool. That's good. Right. That's a good update. Thanks, Jessica. I like to make a motion to approve. The expenditure at three thousand three hundred dollars for installation at the library. Do a second. Second. Any discussion? Is that the sum Is there a jazz? Well, I was going to just go public works library. Vermont at all. Okay. Yes, we did. We tried talking to Efficiency Vermont in twenty twenty. We spent an entire year working with them, and there's. So, I mean, as you know, they have a list of contractors who you can work with. Uh, they're so annoying. Guys. It's so annoying. I, yeah. I, I, I think I have too much trauma from that that I can't even hear the word. <laughs> but I just don't, I just don't think that it's realistic for, we get this quote, it's only good for so long. I, if they if have to. Quote, it doesn't, it's, it's skewed. There's something out of balance. I would encourage you to talk to her. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. Well done. Thank you. Okay. A motion to purchase a tablet with monthly twenty dollars for cellular cellular data, as well as four thousand four hundred and forty five dollars in expenditure for salt truck upgrades. Uh, we have a motion in a second. Any discussion? Donna, are you good? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Did you get that, Brian? Jason stepped out. I did. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Okay, next up is Historical Society weather vane display. Hopefully that can be quick. Um, I think everybody saw pictures of it uh, in, uh, in play in my... I think the best way to display that candidly, and I'm willing to, to do it, would be to build a little cupola looking kind of arrangement that the weather vane would stick into um, and display it in the downstairs in a way and manner that would not involve falling over and killing somebody. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm willing to volunteer to do the work necessary to, to do that. Um, the village already approved this at our joint meeting. Uh, I don't know if they understood the size of it, but being that they have already approved it, I uh, motion to approve uh, displaying the weather vane in question in the clock tower section of municipal office. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? The only thing, the only thing uh, that I would ask is that we just make sure that things are accessible around that area because I know it is very large and I do have a little bit of a concern with the size. Um, although I'm totally in favor of having it on display. But I, I did also just want to say that um, this was actually discovered in the old town clerk, and it it's not the current weather vane that the town also owns. Um, on that building, it, it had been taken down many years ago and was up in the attic and was donated by the studio. So. Oh, thanks. I think um, a little um, little placky thing would be in order, either on your base or something. We can do something. Just it, it, it. Yeah, I mean, it would it would really be nice to do something like that. I can help you order it. I'll pay for it. Okay. Okay, um, all those in favor? Me. Aye. I'm going to uh, this because uh, there we have three. Okay, Duncan's, I said it. Duncan's abstaining, Donna. Yeah, and Duncan was abstaining. Yep, good. Uh, ice rink. So, wait, okay. Uh, yeah, so the ice rink, um, we brought it up at the last meeting as an added item. Um, Weather conditions have changed quite a bit since then, but it's still kind of an outstanding problem. Um, Dean's been working on a few different possibilities for solutions, talking to some other stakeholders, other folks that use the Legion field, and we're looking at uh, a few different options. I think that we can get it, in the interest of time, we can get into detail on what those options are right now, or we can... Uh, since we're, I don't think we're going to be able to take action on it this season, we can circle back on this one in the future. I think we should circle back. It's too late to take action. I say let's come back in May and get it on the docket. Can you put that on your list, Brian? I will. Ice rink in May. There's no ice in May. Okay, next up, uh, review and draft town meeting warning. All right, you've got a copy of the most recent, sorry, I'm getting to it, the most recent uh, annual town meeting warning. <laughs> um, let's see, I've got a couple of the, well, I guess I'll just start at the top. Um, we've got our things we're voting on by ballot, and then we get into the meeting itself. 
I will fill in with the actual dollar amounts once we have those from the final budget. Are you and, on Article Six now? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to make one suggestion, and I, I don't know how you would want to do these by motion or what, but I I would like to see Article Six. Well, Article Six really depends on what we do with Article Seven, um, but I would like to see us insert the word "estimated" also in front of non-tax revenues because we. We never know what the actual non-tax revenues are until after town meeting and after we're going to build this article. So, can you run uh, my grammar, and you can correct me on this. I think that estimated applies to <coughs> both items that follow it. Okay, let me read it out loud. Shall the voters authorize total fund expenditures for operating expenses of X dollars? of which an estimated X dollars shall be raised by taxes and X dollars by non uh, by non tax revenues. So you think the estimated applies to both, Brian? I do, but I'm happy to make it more clear and add another estimated in there. I don't think it. I'm fine with adding another estimated. I am also. Me too, fine. All yeah. right, you got three. All right. Um, then voters offer as a ton of Johnson to raise appropriate and expend the sum of X dollars for the following organizations. I personally like that. I've well, got a couple of these highlighted right now, and th those are just uh, name checks that Lamoille County Home Health and retired and senior volunteers. I'm not sure if that's the proper name for the organization or just how we've been referring to them internally yeah the retired senior women okay. yeah it's not our it's something else something else yeah. yeah yeah so we've been internally referring to them by an older name and i i think it needs to be updated okay yeah. i have reservations now about having this having it article seven article seven after seeing the policy that I had actually forgot that I was one of the members that signed it back in 2003. I rem I know in practice, we were doing as laid out here by the policy. I didn't realize we actually had an actual policy for it, but uh, I don't think it's fair to all of the nonprofits that were operating under the power of the current policy if we're gonna separate it into a special article. The understanding they had when they post submitted their request was an article. The voters approved it, and then from that point on, it would be rolled into our budget. So I, I guess I have a little so heartburn, heartburn now separating it back out. If if we haven't given them the full warning that we were going to do so, and probably change this policy. So item number three in the policy. The select board at their sole discretion may include these. You don't think that you think may is guaranteed that they're included. Yeah, but I think you need to read the whole policy because it really, I, I think the unfair part of it, and I agree with you, Eric, I think the unfair part of it is if we had notified them in December, for example, the, that we were going to change the policy and that this was no longer Right, right now, they have three days to go out and solicit a petition to get it put in as an article, which they have the right to do. <clears throat> so I, I just think it's unfair to all of a sudden at this late date, call them up tomorrow and say, uh, Select Board isn't gonna put any of those in, they're gonna have a separate article mm -hmm. and you can petition if you want and you got three days to do it. They could petition for an individual article if they want. We're not going to petition to, to get on Article 7. No, but they, as an individual organization, they could circulate a petition which would read, will the voters authorize uh, you know, the sum of $1,410 for North Country and the 
And that's the way that's the way it used to be done. Each and every one of these articles right. was voted on separately and independently. And it took a long time to get through those articles. And maybe that's fine. I, I could certainly support an article asking the voters if they wanted to go back to that system. I just think doing it now at this point, given the given the fact that to me it's not consistent with our policy or the intent of the policy. And the difference between like North Country Animal League, $1,400. When it's in our budget, the voters do not have the ability to go in and do a line item elimination. In this article, a voter could stand up and amend the article to eliminate North County Animal League and leave all the rest or change all of the numbers. They could they could change this article in any fashion and it would be it would be the voters. Uh, so how did you get printed like this right now in front of me? We at the last meeting thought about pulling it out of our budget and presenting it in this fashion. And I, I knew because it was in a bunch of prior town reports yeah. in town. Okay. Um, the the thing about this is the policy is that forget the all the bullets, get them all for a second. The top of the policy says community service organizations may request funding from the town voters in one of two ways. This is the problem for me. One traditional submission of petitions uh, as per requirements of state statute for articles that are in town meeting morning, or by inclusion as a line item in the selectmen's. Uh, annual budget. That to me says there's one of two ways and the third way, which is what we have, is not in this policy. Which which is what that? Like the select board putting these as an article is not one of the two methods listed in this policy. Either they petition to get their own article or they request it be part of the budget. Those are the two options in this policy. So I don't love the policy, clearly. It should be redone. But I'm the only living member of the so I'm getting uh, well, Rosemary. It's but the way that it's not. done yeah, it is very, they yeah. are, they make a request to us now, and they've had this policy for years, right. you know, all these organizations. So they're making a request to have their have they all made the request? I can't. Brian would have to answer that question. Presumably, they've submitted a letter. To Brian, have they all requested? They've all made the request. Um. So, what do we want to do? I, I think I'm the only person that wants to keep Article Seven. I kind of want to keep it too, honestly. I mean, even though it goes against our policy, I, I understand. Or you're saying uh, somebody could stand up on the floor and amend the article. That's really giving the taxpayers of this town. I don't think the ability is not a bad it. idea. It's just change policy and present it next year. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a topic for discussion for next year. Right. And I agree. And I and I and I would probably not. I'd be amenable to going back to this format, but at this date. Where should should we know. ask the voters? I mean, should we <laughs> article asking the voters if they want to? I mean, no. Put it into perspective. No, we should. The whole thing article. is less than 1% of your total budget. And well, it's a penny and a half. So it depends on how you really do it. But I understand what you're trying to say, what you're saying. And, I, and again, I don't care. I mean, if, if, if the voters decide that they want to vote on each, I can tell you it was... You guys aren't old enough to remember. I do. Um, I'm going to take that as a compliment. <laughs> it, was, it was painful sometimes to go through. Each, each one of these articles is going to take a minimum of five minutes to deal with. Duncan, I, 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 and Duncan, I nixed the idea of putting an article in asking the voters if they want to go back to the, the old style. I'm not in favor of that. I think we should have this discussion. So three members would like to remove Article 7 as is, yep. correct? Yep. All right. three. I say put that question is answered and we move on. All right. So next article. 
Uh, I've got the economic <laughs> development professional in, um, in as an article rather than as a part of our budget line item. So the offer, so the voters authorize the town of Johnson to raise appropriate and expend up to fifty thousand dollars for the purpose of hiring or contracting with an economic development professional. And this is pretty similar for the article that was in last year. No, at last year was more generic. I like this. I like like this. this. I'm good with it. Yep. Shall the voters offer last year? Was, shall the voters yeah. authorize the town of Johnson to raise appropriate and expend up to $40,000 for the purpose of economic community and economic development? So it's a little more specific. I like Article 8 too. Yeah, you're good. You don't cut off that. Okay. Is everybody good on eight? Yep. Yep. And the next one is the um, yeah, property tax. Standard, right? Yep. Check. Are the dates correct on that? It's now eight. Oh yeah. Rosemary, do you have you looked at this? I have So article eight. Could you please? Seven, right? Thank you. Yeah, I think I avoided the holidays, but please check my work. And Article 10, which is now nine, shall the voters authorize the town of Johnson to establish an Arboretum Reserve Fund to be used for preservation, development, and health of the Johnson Arboretum in accordance with VSA law, to be funded annually by donations dedicated to the Arboretum and or unspent funds dedicated to the town of Johnson Tree Board. I would suggest the possibility of adding um, bequests in there in addition to donations I, I think a bequest is a little bit different than a donation um and it, it, it could be that somebody like when you're rich and famous beth you may decide to bequeath you know a hundred thousand dollars to the arboretum fund it's right behind eric's house so yeah 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 i think we could even name it for you know we could i think unspent funds dedicated the Town of Johnson Tree Board should actually refer to a specific line in the budget. Because we all know how budgets can have lines added and changed, and you mean you can have uh, whole sections for a committee. That's exactly my concern with being with specifying it as if it's going to be un unspent funds. Right now, they're just a lot one line item. But in the future, we might decide to break them out into a section. And if we start to break them out into a section, but they're funded by a line that we refer to that we don't want to use anymore, we then have to go back to the voters and ask for an amendment to the reserve fund. If we just say unspent funds that were already dedicated to the Johnson Tree Board, I think that we're protected. But it's pretty easy to have a considerable amount of funds. So would un when you have a whole section, would unspent funds be the difference between revenue and expense, or would it just be what wasn't spent out of the expense line item? That's a good question. I'm thinking of it as a you know, if in the future it becomes a section, you have revenue, you have expected expense, right? Mm -hmm. But whatever is not spent is left over. So in that case, it would be the difference between revenue and expense. Could be a whole section, though. And we all know how six or eight line items can add up to quite a bit in surplus funds in any given year. I'm fine with it as it is. Or you could just say unspent funds dedicated to the town of Johnson Tree Board by line item. Which is what I said to begin with. Yeah. But you don't say the name of the line item. Right. The and then in the future, if there's a section, it probably would have a line item uh, funds to go to the reserve fund or something like that. A, a, a funding source to get to the reserve. Which is which is certainly something Walter has made an issue of, is yeah. particularly with the capital reserve 
Highway Capital Repair Fund, the article specifically says line items. And he has made that very clear that he thinks only those funds can be raised or spent on according to that line item. Whereas this is broader. It is, which allows. Which is what you might not like. That might be what I don't like about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I guess it allows freedom of flow, but. Um... Do we care if it come, it's coming from tree board expense? Uh, Why do we care? I don't understand. I mean, say down the road, uh, the tree board has a building or something and they get uh, office expense, admin expense, heat expense, electricity, sewer. All of those are allocated to costs, right? But if all those are inflated by 10% uh, and a select board doesn't catch it in their budget or is predicting higher expense, they could have three, four, five, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in excess in a given year. Let's see. Okay. If it was missed by enough eyes, that's in the future. If it was a section, right now it's just one line item. It's not right now. It's ten years from now. What's the plan for the arboretum? It just says it's allowed to be funded by. It doesn't mean that all the funds are going to go there. Right now, their line item is pretty broad. Tree board expense, so almost anything that gets lumped into there. But this is about it could. This is about establishing a reserve fund and the potential funding sources of that reserve fund. It's not about uh, the balance, the surplus for that line goes into this. It's not what this is about. This is about establishing a reserve fund. Oh. Um. Be funded annually by then instead of giving it said or but it says and or unspent funds dedicated. And their potential funding sources. I guess. So that's not saying the unspent funds will go to it? It's not saying the unspent fund will go to it. It's just saying that one of the sources of funding this reserve. Uh, reserve fund is potentially unspent funds. It's not saying that, like, this isn't giving directive to the select board to push unspent funds to this. That wasn't overly clear to me. And when none of us are here, is it going to be overly clear to that board? This is about establishing a reserve fund to be used for, it's about establishing a reserve. The word establish is your action item. So we can just strike on. Unspent funds from We're it. Required and by then, law to talk about the potential funding sources is what I'm which hearing over and I'm over. saying yeah. if we strike unspent funds, it would create the reserve fund, like you're talking about, and it would give a way to fund it. They wouldn't be allowed to use unspent funds. They would not be allowed to use unspent funds to fund this this to put money into this reserve fund. Mm -hmm. It's not about where that all the money comes from a specific source. It's about where the money could come from. Do you stop abusing that dog over there? That's right in my interpretation, Rosemary. What's that? Do you agree that that's like the intent of this is to establish the reserve? Where the money's going to come from. Where it's going to come from or where it could come from. Those are two different words. No, where it's going to come from. And it does not mean that the budget overage needs to go to this reserve fund. It's just talking about establishing the fund. And like, basically you're thinking about this being a bank and what connections is that bank allowed to have? We could settle it's this. It's an allowance. It's not. We could settle this very quick. If I'm the only know. board member with it's reservations, good point. It stays good with it? Board um, I, I'm good with that part of it. And okay. you want the and bequest? And be, yeah, and bequest. And I'm wondering if we should also consider grant funds in there. Uh, Rosemary, you said earlier you don't think grant yeah. funds can be used. Yeah, because grant funds are usually for a specific purpose. But if, if, the, if you... Yeah, it's... Are you good with this, Mark? 
I am good with this. We're yeah. going to make the final call anyways. If there's unspent funds, it's going to come to the select board, and we're going to say, "Great, oh, good idea. Let's put some over there." Yeah, I don't know if the future board. Oh, well, so it'll be in your lap, <laughs> so they can make it. Are you good with us? I think we should be comfortable. It'll catch. We can catch stuff. Before, okay. Um, so, and the only just the only change that I hear. Are you also comfortable with the adding? Um, Requests. Or requests. Yeah. Doesn't Fine. matter to me. Nobody's yes, going to request Fine. that. Okay. If, you, if we want. You never know. Yeah. Sue might. Mm -hmm. sure. Never know. All right. It could, uh, I would think the difference between a request and a donation is. Yeah. yeah so. Okay. Tax wise, it's, it's different. To me, a big request is a, a huge amount of not the stuff. I okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, shall the town, shall the voters author it? So we're going to add the Amber request. Nobody cares. And otherwise, we're good. Yeah. Yep. Right. And so I'm going, this is where I'll well. insert the grant match fund article uh, when I've got that written. Yeah, yes. That one, yes. And then we move on to what in your draft is article 11. So uh, in the grant match article, that grant match article will be written the same way that this pre-board article is written, the arboretum is written. They're very similar. Endowments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got surplus as possible source, budget line item, donations, endowments, bequests. Uh are, are all going in there. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Article 11, shall the voters authorize the town of Johnson to appoint the town clerk? Okay, in accordance with blah, 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 blah and the next is treasurer. Rosemary, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Appointed people, they don't have to live in town. That's either over how we look at it. They're more of a employee. They have a job description and uh, wages and benefits would be set by the town, which is already Mm -hmm. done now. Some appointed uh, elected clerks have their own their salary or budget with they have articles. What do you mean they have articles? They have whatever say they get fifty thousand dollars a year that's an article in the in the morning. Oh uh, okay. And an elected clerk or treasurer oh. could not be removed from office as they are only Support to the town residents with an appointed clerk if there was cause that she could be removed. Should we put a date in this, like commencing I, in 2024 or something? I think um, maybe this, days if it's approved. Maybe this, maybe this is just uh, my take on it, but that was all information on it but how do you feel about it i think maybe was the question maybe that if, do you feel like now you some time for this i would think in two or three more years would be a perfect time for it okay i agree totally yeah. so you would like these on the warning for next year well, the year after you're only year. running for a three-year term right i would say 2020 because I, mean, I, I in, in furtherance of that concept, I really think we need to involve Rosemary as much as we possibly can to develop a plan that we can take to the voters. Because I think we got one shot at this. Um, and I'll tell you right now, if Rosemary stands up and says she doesn't think it's a good idea, it ain't going to happen. Um, and I'd much rather have it happen. The other question I have is, do you feel the same way about both clerk and treasurer? The treasurer is a much harder position to fill because we need an accounting background mm -hmm. and you need to have more experience in that position. The clerk one, you hold her the records and you're the election, the top election official. And do you feel the same way about that in terms of in terms of you? 
let's just make an assumption for a second. If we did have this and it did pass and it was appointed, I'm pretty certain we would want you still to hold the positions. Um, but you feel like we should hold off on both for the two to three year period? Okay. Okay. Treasurer right now is appointed anyway, right? Through our after the assistant treasurer is appointed by her. Which would still be the case. Oh, I'm just looking. I'm, just looking. Sorry, I'm picturing the page that we go through. But anyway, yeah, you're elected. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, thought, I thought when Evan asked how you feel about this, it's also, you feeling healthy? That's <laughs> 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 what I like. So, you know. <laughs> well, I'm all the issues of what they didn't eat. Yes. And, and, you know, it's, I want you, I want you, I want you healthy for at least three more years. That's my plan. We like that plan. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, and when we think about the entire plan, I think we have to think about the ramifications of the village, too. Um, yes. And that's why I hope. You know, Rosemary can help us in that, in understanding that, the ramifications of those decisions, too. Yeah, the village is putting, putting this on the ballot. Yeah. April. Yeah. For, and they, and they have a different this day when you do. They, they elect the treasurer for every year. So. In theory, we could end up with four different people in each of them. Yes, we could. Who would want to be the clerk of the the there's no, there's, there's nothing to do except for being a meeting. Yeah, that's why somebody might want to be it. Maybe Eric will want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, president. You could also make it a volunteer position, <laughs> but that's not our decision, right? So we'll bring right. up this conversation okay, so about our current articles 11 and 12 again next year, probably. And in the meantime, in the meantime, strike them. Everybody's good with that. I mean, no, you've got an article missing. What? Any other business? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any other business? Right. Being legally brought before this body, and yada, yada, yada. And that's where we usually impeach the president or something like right. that. Oh, that's right. Oh, right. right. That wasn't in last year's. Because we it should didn't have a town there was no town meeting. We had uh, Australian ballot. We don't have the opportunity to have any other business. Yeah, Burke. Rick Thompson was always bringing up something yeah. exciting. Well, we've been peace president. And I don't know. What he's done. We've stopped the performance. <laughs> and I assume we have not well, received any, any additions yeah. or inclusion of articles. Not yet. Do you anticipate any? And we, I'm heard about it. Oh, um, the only other one that I wanted to bring up um, is everybody, I think, had an email from Kyle about oh, the, gardener. the gardener position. So I just want to bring it up. She, you know, she did some research on her. The, and I checked with her today to see if she was circulating a petition. And she said, no, she's requesting that the board include this article and the article would read shell of others authorize the town of Johnson to raise appropriate and expend up to fifteen thousand nine hundred twenty five dollars for the purpose of hiring a seasonal contracted gardener slash landscaper so I don't know what the board's pleasure is but yeah. I think we owe it to her to at least discuss it, discuss it. Mm -hmm. thoughts I don't support it I think it, it they're serious. Well, get a petition out there. It's not that hard to get the, the required number of signatures. Then get it here and get it on the morning, and the voters can decide. But I'm not going to, from the select board initiative, support putting it there. The deadline is the 19th. Rosemary? The board can put anything off in the morning until it's right. the time. But petitions are going to do the 19th. Yeah, petitions are okay. <clears throat> okay. Mark? You're going to agree with Evan anyway. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think either, either you or Evan. I, really. think, um, I think that I try never to agree with them. Um, <laughs> I, I think that um, 
she pulled together a petition. And we should notify her. Yeah. Do that. Okay. I'm going to do that right now. Okay. And Evan, do you agree? Petition? Are you in the petition? I'm here? mind blown that we can't ask organizations but people to pull together a petition in three days, but we can ask our own committees to do it. Um, but I am not supportive of uh, adding that to the budget. So it wasn't about adding it to the budget. It's about, about adding it as an article, which I understand your point, but, but I because I be don't clear that you don't want to add it as an article. The only difference I'd say, Evan, for me anyways, is this is something new. It's a new position. If it was a new nonprofit, I would expect the same thing, that they would have to have present a petition. It is new. It's just saying that something's unreasonable on one side and not the other. It's cherry picking. But... I'm not supportive of it. But you're not supportive of it. Okay, so that's three. Okay. Okay. Anything else for articles? So Brian, you got the note on any other business? You got the note on any other business. Add another estimated to Article 6. Add bequests to Article 10. Uh, everything we're doing with the grant fund Grant match fund, strike clerk and treasurer, add any other business, and we're not adding landscaping. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next up, is there any other discussion about the warning? Uh, no, there's not. But hold on one okay. second. I just want to do a really quick scan of where we are. It's nine o'clock. Um, we have review website management, the fire service contract, planning to fail farewell party for Eric, discussion of potential light industrial park proposal, generous promise, lease agreement, and executive session. Um, I'm wondering if we can get through the website hosting really quickly and a fire contract, and then maybe the farewell even. Let's try to shoot to get through all of those in 15 minutes tops um, so we can reassess where we are on the agenda. Okay. You want to set a meeting date while we're on this item for the meet for the uh, warning? Uh, while we're on the warning item, yeah, good idea. Um, I was thinking that day. <clears throat> I was thinking on, do the trustees have a meeting on the 23rd? They don't. Maybe, does that work for everybody that evening? We can talk about salt, right? The 23rd. Um, 23rd. If it's a short meeting. Yeah, it'll be short. Well, okay, maybe it'll be short. We'll try to make it short. Just make sure Mark doesn't come. That'll be pretty good. Right? What time? Well, he's just going to agree with you anyway. Uh, six thirty. Six thirty. What, what day of the week? Twenty third. Monday. Monday. Next Monday. Monday. Seven days from today. Eastern Standard Time. Busy? No. So that's the not not moment. I'm, third? I'm searching for other things. Yeah. Are we gonna do six? Okay. Six thirty. Six. Oh, does anyone have a preference? I just. Put I don't. I put it in my good. calendar for the whole year. Let's do it. Six thirty and. I like 630. Let's do yeah. 630. Okay. Of course, I have it ending at 1030. Well, that one's not going to end. That's not going to end. It's going to be 1130. <laughs> okay. I remember that. Funny business. Reviewing the website, hosting, and management agreement. All right. So we have uh, annual contract is up with our uh, our host and uh, website administrator have good service with her. Um, we're, we've been pleased working with her. Uh, the, if you recall, we had a little bit of a discussion at our joint meeting about possibly seeking out other alternatives and other 
upgrades to the website and that was inconclusive. Um, so we were not really prepared for anything else. We're still broadly interested in an alternative for the, the website, but not we haven't cost? come to an agreement about an action about that. What well, Evan? Is there any cost change from last year? Is there a cost change from last year? It is give me a couple of seconds. There's a, a minor increase. This is under a thousand dollars. Um, motion to continue service with 3M promotions for what we're website? We're renewing. Never continue, but we can renew. Sorry. Services. With okay, we have a motion and a second. <laughs> Your motion was to continue with 3W promotions. We could renew. This is based on the proposal that we've received. Yes. Give a second based on the proposal we've received. Yep. Perfect. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Mark, are you aye? Mark's an aye too, so unanimous. Mark's great. This is the invoice. Is it authorized the invoice? Uh, motion to approve payment of the invoice. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Me. Aye. Same thing, it'll 3W promotions invoice number 1793 in the amount of $528.76. That's exactly what my motion was. That was the motion. But you don't need this approval for some of It's not in our orders. So she just wants to pay it. It says it's due the 19th. Yeah, that's good. Good. Uh, okay. All those in favor? I, yes. Okay. All right, let's have it. Uh, next up is the fire service contract. Uh, you've received a copy of the fire service contract from the village with that constitutes a 3% increase. And that's reflected right. in the current budget, Brian? It is. I would motion to we'll authorize the chair to sign the fire service contract with the village uh, pending maybe just a grammar error in section three. I assume they want payment for the first six months due on June 30th, not July 31st. Because it's on the ending month for the other two, but whatever. Where is it? Why am I missing it? Section three. Uh, fee schedule. Uh, sorry. Will we do payable according to the following schedule? Payments for January and June will be paid in July. Payments for July and September will be due in September, and payments for October and December will be due in December. I'm assuming they just. Yes. You're assuming what? They, they wrote July, but they meant June. No, they did not. Sometimes. No, I don't. Uh, it's a different fiscal year. This was intentional for, us, for them. <laughs> That's the way. It, yeah. That's why it was intentionally written this way. Oh, really? Fall asleep. Fine. Uh, I already motioned to authorize the chair to sign it. Yeah, they're not local. Leave all the rest off, Donna. So, was your motion to authorize the chair to sign the fire service contract? Second. I have a motion and a second. Have... Power me through the end of the meeting. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Hee haw. Aye. You have to say aye, Evan. Aye. I have it. Okay, Next I have up is discuss farewell planning for Eric. This is the continuation of our last discussion. March 4th is the proposal for having a going away with Eric. Is everyone supportive of doing this? All right. Could you say that again? Duncan is supportive of the going of a farewell for Eric. I want to know the cost associated with it. We have to set that. Not to exceed ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> That's something. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, the trip to the Grand Bahamas. If we use Jenna's promise, does there any costs associated with that? The dimension of cost and Greg asked for it, it to be reserved, so I assume not, but I'll confirm. But we do have it. Um, I have talked to them, and we do have it booked. For the fourth, March fourth. So it's booked regardless of whether there's interest or not. Price is no idea. Yeah, you book it. You book it anyway. 
way the world works. Fair enough. What's the date on this so I can put it in my room? March 4th. Are you supportive of this, Mark? I am. Price is no object. I'm totally supportive. I said at the last meeting that there would be any. Okay, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about, we should probably have a motion um, for expenditures and that can help determine what goes into this. Does anyone have a feel for how much you'd like to spend? Very importantly to me, I would like to ensure that we're not extending as bad as it sounds gratitude to a select board member beyond what we would do for our employees. And we would not, which is two hundred dollars, right, Rosemary? It was more than two hundred dollars. We had a party, and who paid for gifts. the party? Didn't the town pay for any of the retirement parties we had? Mm -hmm. Do you have, you have an idea of dollar amount? Yeah, we give yes, five hundred dollars for plus and. So we gave so Anne a gift of two hundred dollars. So, so Beth, I'm up for so making a motion for five hundred dollars yeah, plus any grants, bequests, or <laughs> or donations, donations or donations. Donations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I will. I will. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Five hundred bucks, Duncan. Second. Um, I'm the Yeah. Any further discussion? That's the maximum. And I have two old Cute. guys. Myself. Two old guys are going to do yeah. a request. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. I'm confused. Is the maximum town contribution five hundred dollars? Yes. Is that in line with what we would do for our employees? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what she said. All right. Does that bring you on board with a yes? It... All those in favor, we have a yes from Duncan and Mark. Are you going to? What have all, we done for other long? All those the post. Been nobody that I'm aware. Of. Eric, so day. how it, long did like Blaine Delight serve? Eighteen Red years. Pepper, uh, Red was he was the police chief, so he wasn't board member for that many years. And and Brad, he was probably about eighteen years. He I, just he just missed the uh, public service. That's right. He just missed it. Public service award. Um, so those are the longest serving that I can recall in the last 50 years. Board members? Yeah, select board members. So, but we're, we're, we're in the middle of a vote. Yes or no? But I will say, it does not time, get enough answers. Discussion time is over with. We're voting. Wait a minute, there's a motion and a second, right? Yeah, and discussion. After discussion and right. then nobody answered and then, and then we, we started voted. voting. Most of the employees. Well, I hired Duncan and what retired time, him. What time is this? All of the employees that I went to retirement parties over, I hired. That's pretty crazy. It is. I've been here a long time. It's okay, you don't have to justify yourself, Eric. Seriously. I, I, I so, are you gonna? So, uh, all those opposed? Uh, all those abstaining? I abstain. Can you sign that too, just in the presence of? There you go. Pass. Uh, and I'll, I'm an I also. Evan, are you going to vote or are you just abstaining? I didn't say no. You didn't vote. I'm asking if you're going to vote or not. Well, you asked for a nay. I'm not going to abstain. I guess I. Okay, eyes have it. Um. All right, and then you wanted to kind of reassess where we're at. Um. The only one that's absolutely time sensitive that remains, uh, as far as I understand it, is uh, the Genesis Promise BCDP surety agreement. I think the Mumley thing could be pretty quick, couldn't it, Duncan? I think it could be. Yeah, let's do it. Mumley, right. go. Okay. So my my thought on Mumley is I I would like I know I would like to accept the. The proposal in concept, um, and ask Brian to ask Mumley to prepare a contract for review and action by the board. And I would like to see an additional scope of work to include an update to the construction cost estimates as part of his proposal. 
Um, I would like to have a better understanding of of the items that he said are not included in the scope of work. I'd like a little better understanding of what costs might be associated with those items and whether or not in his professional opinion, he thinks they will be needed. For example, a traffic study. I have a stinking suspicion Act 250 is gonna require a traffic study. Mm -hmm. um, LCPC will do a basic traffic study. I don't know whether that would pass the test for what Act 250 needs or not. But so a little bit, a little bit better idea of what of the items that he does not include as part of his scope of work, what those costs would be. And I think Evan, you might have had a thought or about the survey part of that. I think you're you've covered everything. Okay. So was that these are just for clear, Brian, or would you like Duncan to outline that in an email so we can be efficient at our next meeting? I think uh, an email would be great. I think I've got everything for you, Duncan, but if we could do a phone call or or uh, an email, that might help. Would you be okay with that? Sure. Perfect. I think we're good with this item. Yeah, I'm good with it too. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I've got one. I've got a couple seconds on this. Uh, this was not a, a proposal submitted as the result of an RFP. This was a request to Mumley um, so that we would have a better idea of what we were looking at. If the board's okay with that, if they feel that they're that we're comfortable with this, we can proceed, but I want you to be aware. I'm perfectly comfortable not circulating an RFP because I think it's an update to an existing uh, proposal that we did solicit an RFP for back in 2008 or 2010, whatever it was. Hey, but it's over $10,000, right, Brian? It is, but one of the provisions in our procurement policy is for uh, sole source expertise, as I think the, because and I'm sorry, I don't have anything, everything in front <laughs> of me, but we can justify going with Mumley and not circulating an RFP under our procurement policy. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of it and, you know, full transparency, we're making mm -hmm. this rationale. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. I think we're going to get through this. Let's do it. We're keep it. We're going to keep pushing. Jenna's promise. Grant. Surety agreement. I hope this one's going to be quick. We've got a surety ag agreement drafted by our um, by our attorney uh, to protect the town and VCDP in case Jenna's promise fails to complete the required actions as they're part of the grant. Um, and our attorney approves this. Our attorney wrote and approves this surety agreement that it protects us and and serves the VCD purposes. VCDP is also seeing the agreement and supports it. The only question I have is, do we not need to sign this? Yeah, no, it's more to speak for them to us. Okay. I I would move to approve the security agreement as drafted. I have a motion. Do you have a second? Second, sorry. Are th is there any discussion? Well, what was the reason that we don't need to sign this? It's it's from them to us. It's a surety agreement from them oh, to us. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Had it. Lease agreement for the Holcomb House. In your packet, you've got an updated lease agreement for the caretaker's apartment at the Holcomb House. And that's based on the rents that were discussed at the board meeting. Are there any other that's changes what was to this? discussed at the last one, yeah. Yeah. Are there any other changes to this beyond the uh, monthly rent, Brian? Uh, there's a couple minor updates to it uh, to bring it in line with our uh, the the lease agreement that we had with the other apartment, uh, no functional differences. I Just would, grammar and and things like that, as, as I recall. 
I think we should probably. I'm I'm a, I'm okay in concept, but I think Tom Carney is no longer a member of the Historical Society Board, and I'm not sure that he would want to be the listed contact person. Um, so I, I, th I think we should check on that. Okay. So would you motion? Has Tom or have Donnie been notified of the impending change in rent so that we could have it 60 days from tonight? Uh, he has been notified. Uh, and in the lease agreement, I think it's, I took that as the time when I notified him as the time since notification. So uh, let's see. So that it begins in March. Are you okay? Everybody's reading. I had a minute where I thought the screen had frozen. So March, April. Yeah, this is on packet page 28 under rent. It says March, April, and May. Uh, March, April, May, and June will be 525 and 550 thereafter for the term of the lease. And the term of the lease is one year? Yes. Okay. Uh, it runs from February 1st and terminates January 31st, 2024. Um, I do have an update, Brian. On page packet page 33, it has the fourth to the last bullet has your contact information with, which I'm fine with, but I think we should also add the municipal office phone number. Similar to like similar to page 35 in contact two, where it says municipal office and after hours, just copying that and putting it in okay. as the contact information. Um, and then the other thing, of course, is that uh Donnie's not gonna be his own contact. Good point. All right, give me just a second. I'm gonna strike. So, yeah, I'm going to have the reward for the reporting. There's a couple of those, actually. <laughs> you should have updated. I'm going to strike Donnie. Brian, can you? We didn't give him the reward. He could be, he could be reporting a week. multiple times a day. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I can't understand what you guys are saying if you're... I'm just mumbling about a $10 reward for reporting a plumbing week. Yeah. <sighs> I've never seen anything like that, but hopefully he doesn't have more than a couple weeks a day. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm not really sure what to do about the replacement of Donnie's name. Maybe it is appropriate given the circumstances. Isn't he in here like every week? Just about. Okay. I think he knows staff pretty well. Yeah, we're we're net tech on is. this contract. Does he know? Is this similar to what he's already signed, Brian? It's very similar to what he's already signed. Good. I'm glad to know that he's not upset about not being able to have keg parties. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. They do. They do have card parties. Yeah. So, are we good? So do we want to make contact with yeah, Brian yeah. rather than Donnie Garrett? I think to Evan's point, let's just leave it as is. That way we're not that way we're using the same contract for anyone that we lease to. Um and obviously he knows that he can't contact himself. So we would leave leave Don leave it in a contact one? Yeah, just leave it so that we are consistent. And he knows who to, to, to Evan's point, he knows who to contact. Nice. I think we do need to give Brian authority to sign if we want him to sign it. And if not, then I, you know, we could change that too. So, Brian, um, the lease agreement refers to as apartment one. The contact information refers to Donnie as apartment two. Uh, that is a typo. It should be apartment two throughout. 
Yeah, the okay. header is wrong. Okay. Well, fun with the changes made. I really didn't think we're going to get one of those this quickly. Are we? Is the board fine with changes that are? I'm made? fine. All right. Motion authorized. Ryan to sign lease agreement as amended. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Am I reading that right? Hey, chatty second, Kathy. Second. I've never. I'm just trying to figure out what the. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? What's yeah. the demise premise? Tenant shall keep the demise premise and clean. That's a demise. Under insurance, page 30, about the fourth word is tenant shall keep the demise premises. That's a, probably a legal term that I don't under, that I've never come across. It's like, it used to be a funeral, it could be a demise premise. <laughs> I think it's a typo, <laughs> and it was supposed to be private uh, premises or something. Long and was... <laughs> All right, Mike. How long? How long do you want to drag this out? I guess <laughs> it just the strangest word I've ever seen. Further discussion. <laughs> no further discussion. Okay. I don't. Does Don have any cash on hand? <laughs> if he doesn't, he probably keeps it home. Bye. 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 <laughs> okay, executive session. Any would anyone like to kick get us in there? Uh I motion that premature public disclosure of negotiations may place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Would that be the case? I would motion that we enter executive session to discuss economic development contract and services as allowed by one BSA 313A1. A second, second. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. We are in executive session at nine twenty-two.